Welcome to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I can't do math. Mm. I'm Dan. Yeah, the uh, the Common Core new style math is... I just don't do enough math. I don't even think it's the Common Core new style math. Oh, uh, Sam and EJ are here. We'll get to them in a minute. Hey, Sam, what's up? You're the important one. Sorry. Hey. I didn't mean to lump you in with EJ. I apologize. How dare you? Yeah, no, I know. I know. EJ, hi. Good to see you. We'll play your intro in a second. And by the way, I, I've been waiting for this moment because every he seems like everybody has- Shania this- Twain, Ryan White <laughs> from this moment. Every every comedian, Phil Collins. Every anybody in radio or whatever that tells jokes or don't, they always complain if they have kids that age that they they don't understand the math. They can't you know mm-hmm, it's a mm-hmm. big joke. The internet. I, I just don't understand math. I've been waiting to get there be, so I can. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna start doing the bit everybody else is yeah, doing, yeah. and then I see it and I'm like, oh, here it is. I don't understand it, but then I look at it a little and I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. And then I'm like, I it's not that it's not a, it, totally confusing and impossible. It's just a different way than we learned it. So it's counterintuitive to the our education, and that's what is stumping us. But it's not impossible. I get what they're cool. doing. It's just a new way for them to learn. And it's like, okay, it's I just don't think I do enough math. Like my career choice was always going to be something creative and not creative with numbers it was going to be creative with storytelling or creative with some sort of art or performing right yeah yeah. so the only math that i do in here like if i'm just being honest are how many seats we have to sell how many t-shirts we have to order um time codes for editing stuff you know Yeah, yeah, yeah i don't really do any math the hardest math i ever had to do in this profession was when i had to back time the show live for howard stern I would run Howard Stern in the morning, had to do quick subtraction when I would uh, front load commercials so I knew when they'd come back in New York and then I could like sync up the actual live broadcast. That's the hardest thing I've ever had to do with math. Mm. I want to meet that guy who, if he doesn't know like standard, like, like he's putting algebra in play every day. The, the engineers and stuff you no one's no one but like scientists but they do it so are, often that they would just refer to it as math right they don't even look at it like yeah. degrees of math to them it's just a big giant math people work with computers and stuff that they you know understand i think really it's more about understanding what the numbers mean rather because anybody can do math on their phone it's the you know you could do you could have a computer do math yeah for but you. i can't i can't tell you if that process is anywhere near correct yeah, I've never been able to do that. You know, where the graphing calculator, you put all the things in, you hit the button. That's my answer, but I don't know what it's yeah. doing. I, and also, I think the uh, problem is with people don't understand percentages and odds and uh, like, you know, calculating or understanding like what one in a hundred is or one in a million. Just having a general understanding. Well, of I think how I know rare one in a million or, would be your love. No, yeah, I feel like. <laughs> but no Sam, one, what say you? It's what hard to comprehend It'd that. be very hard to get Tom to love you, wouldn't it? Uh, yes, I agree. What? <laughs> You'd have e- to be a small boy that came from his loins. EJ, are you good at math? Yeah, my mom's a math teacher and my dad was an engineer. If you need someone to talk math, you can call my mom up. Dope. Oh. We've never had a mathematician. That's awesome. What? What? I didn't know that. Math dude. mama. No wonder you're yeah, a nerd. She, you she's came- like the math coach. And uh, she was the math coach at Osceola High School. How for, come like, we've never talked about years. the fact that you are you're? Where'd you get your jock from then? Is your dad a big dude? My dad. Well, my dad well, was handicapped. So yeah, well, not, I know not but... from my dad, but my dad's side of the family. Yeah, my uh, <laughs> uncle was like a what was he? Uh, uh, what is that one? The decathlon. He used to do the decathlon in, in college. Oh my god! So your uncle is Bruce Jenner. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> So you got your, uh, like, you know, uh, physical ability and sports ability from your family. Yeah, but both of My his... dad's side, yeah. And yeah. my mom's side is the very nerd side, for sure. Yeah, like, yeah. my uncle is very into, like, comic books and science fiction and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm definitely an amalgamation of both my parents. I almost made a handicap. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I saw myself in your eyes. And, and I, I saw was like, you don't do that. Down. You're I, better than that. Okay, you're just, better than just that. Just so you know, I looked at his eyes. I could see a reflection of a little tiny Tom, and he picked the joke <laughs> off the shelf, and then he put it back. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it. I could <laughs> see it in your eyes. And then I'm like, oh, I'm not supposed to do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. Corona. <laughs> and then you hung your head down, <laughs> put like, your mask up I, over your nose, and walked out of Walmart. I'm going to have to buy that joke because I spread my Corona already. So anyway, EJ, what do you want to start with? 
Oh, oh I didn't play his intro. Opener, or are yeah, we just going to no, skip that? Oh, oh god. my god. <laughs> <laughs> Give him his intro. All right. Yeah. Here. I was distracted by Travis shirtless in your background. Saying, All right, here. Here's your, he had a shirt on. Here's your intro. Oh, well, he took this it off. Time. Pipe After. down. Here we go. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it. It's so, the volume is so low. <laughs> oh, my god. Oh, that's what I deserve. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Too many controls. It's Nerd Jock with EJ. How's it going, EJ? Good. Uh, you guys are coming to MyCon this year? No, are I you, won't be there. Are you talking about CoughCon? <laughs> uh, I saw the Reddit. I saw the Reddit boards, yes. and I'm with them. Yeah, I, mean, I was in there. <laughs> Boycott you CoughCon. You should see the social media she was dealing with yesterday. She was not too happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen. Yeah, but it's can... on um, uh, March 26th. It's at the Wyndham Resort it, over by Sand Lake and I Drive. I'm going there to super spread viruses. <laughs> it's socially distanced. We made it. There's only one way you can go through the con. So it's like a cattle call. You're going to see every table. And there you go. It's, it's safe. Yeah, yeah. If you don't feel safe, don't come. But it, it'll be safe. We're going to have That's sanitizer. That's a mean thing to say. Everywhere. There's only one way. It's a butt funnel cattle call. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a full on uh, like bar a, rescue butt funnel. <laughs> and boy. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, so tight. Oh, I am not letting my wife listen to this. <laughs> yeah. it, it's so tight. Uh, it'll you'll The scum from the front of your teeth will rub off on people's sweatshirts. That's how tight yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going um, to scream EJ, socially distant. <laughs> EJ, I just have to ask because you said March twenty sixth. Yeah. The website says March sixth. Uh, so March you might 6th? want to oh, double twenty days off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's March sixth. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. March sixth. March, oh, March sixth is the warm up, but the real, <laughs> the oh, real yeah. spreading starts on the twenty sixth. I just don't want people to miss it. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Samantha. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, you need a full twenty days to get it incubated. Yeah. 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 And a full you know, on the six. Yeah. And then your yeah. Corona blossoms on the twenty sixth, and then yeah, you know yeah, that's your full yeah, on that's respirator fest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good thing I'm not paying for this advertising. What are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we uh, well, start with nerd stuff? I guess. It's we'll paint your that. respirator <laughs> like the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> we'll get Butler to patina it. Uh, hey, throw some clay on that. Your mask uh, will be uh, black. I Darth patinaed Vader. my uh, respirator to look like an old droid. <laughs> <laughs> Should we uh, continue with the GameStop story, has, how it's changed over the, the past week? Sure, anything to dig us out of the hole, please. <laughs> Well, have you seen all the new stuff? Like how, like the the guys that are on Reddit bought like billboards and skywriters. I'm over to mess it. With hedge fund guys. It, it is the Bernie meme to me. I'm done with it. I'm over it. I don't care. I, I want to know when do when does it become back to real finance again? Now, now uh, here's the the uh, I've seen all the stuff and and people predicted because I am interested in it um, just because it's bizarre. And yeah. it's something that's never happened before and probably is going to change the system in the future, I imagine, because they just can't have willy nilly a bunch of people buying worthless stocks, driving the price up, getting rich. It's like uh, there it could be a lot of fraud in there, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I, I like for sure. People like scam artists and shysters are going to take advantage of this and start uh, getting in there and screwing around and manipulating right. the people that are manipulating the Reddit users. And you're definitely a, chumming the waters I, for it, right? I've met these people before that have had uh, shady dealings with the uh, with stocks and that business. And they for sure are sharks that will jump in here and start basically ruining whatever movement these guys like if they started it for virtuous reasons and like, hey, mm -hmm. this is just to get back and make a statement that we're here. We have a voice. We're the little guy against the big guy. That's all well and good. But I guarantee you. There are scam artists. Oh, it doesn't stay like that. No, uh, uh, among they these can't people, stay pure. No, and, and oh yeah, greedy, non-righteous uh, people are going to involve themselves and start getting rich off of other people's money. And I feel that a lot of people are going to be hurt by this because they don't understand what's happening and they're going to be out uh, maybe money they shouldn't lose. You see what I'm saying? Like, Yeah. Well, because the, the, the new thing is uh, a lot of people are saying uh, silver is the new thing that Reddit was going after. But turns out that the one hedge fund that was bailed out by another hedge fund 
it owns all the silver stuff. So they were trying to like use that misinformation to kind of get people to buy silver to jack up their stuff so they can counter all this Reddit stuff. So you got to be careful what information yes. you hear it, and what you and you get from where you get it from. I, as smart as all the nerds think they are, guess what? These hedge fund guys and all these uh, super wealthy business guys. They're smart too, and they yeah. they will realize what's happening and start playing these guys against each other. Ruin, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're not going to yep. be g- had again. They may have uh, bf them with the GameStop deal, but I, I, these guys are pretty smart. You know, like your uh, your Warren Buffetts of the world uh, didn't get there, and uh, because they were easily fooled. You see what I'm saying? Or like. Yeah. Didn't, yeah, yeah couldn't see something coming or didn't understand. Now they they got hit in the mouth early, but I feel like they're going to protect themselves from getting uh, bigger you know. resources, right? I mean, also, like yeah, yeah, they have more money. You can, it's like lawyers. The more money you have for a lawyer, you can wait people out. So n- it's the same thing with hedge funds. Now I'm ignorant to this, um, and maybe I should have had someone that knows. But uh, you know, <laughs> I thought uh, you had a business degree, Tom. I well, that's a bit that's different. And plus, I didn't. Uh, I have no idea what I learned. Uh, so I couldn't even tell you one thing. It's completely worthless. Completely worthless. I learned in twenty. You know how different two thousand six was when I graduated, and the half the stuff I learned in two thousand four. Is like, what does that mean? What the completely different world. Anyway, um. So, uh, okay. The hedge funds, they're a conglomerate of a bunch of monies. From a mm-hmm. bunch of people's retirement fund, you know, it's like, yes. you know, they, they, yeah. you invest into this hedge fund and they invest um, a bunch of people's monies to the tune of billions and billions of dollars yeah. into places they think can make these people's retirement accounts grow. So theoretically, it's not just, you know, one evil Mr. Business that people are like, like looking at like, oh, I'm going to get Mr. Business. He's the evil it's one. Lord Business. Uh, Lord Business or whatever. It's <laughs> from the Lego movie. Uh thousands of thousands of old men and something now a lot of them are rich as hell but uh some of them are just regular old uh people that invested into the uh, stock right. market and stuff right so yeah, it could be like police unions teachers unions they they invest in these hedge funds because they slush all that money together it's kind of like the plot from the other guys they yeah. kind of did that remember how the police union was giving the money to the one guy oh, to yeah, invest yeah. and they were just going to siphon it out yeah, so it, it's kind of the same thing. It's just like everything is, though. It's a lot more complicated than the cut and dry, like little guy against the evil, wealthy, uh, Mister Monopoly, evil businessman. You know, it's just yeah. like it's it's way more complicated. And I just think that uh, all this will it'll be interesting how it plays out. That's all I'm going to say because I don't know where they're going to go. I've heard some projections that they think that these Reddit guys and these groups will maybe start targeting some actual businesses that have a uh, a good future and not just like some nostalgic GameStop or whatever. Well, you worth you would it. hope that eventually it would roll into something like that. Be- Your buddy Norm mm-hmm. in our Twitch chat room, twitch.tv slash Tom uh, and Dan live. live. Norm again. says, this sounds like someone who really doesn't know what's happening explaining it though. So I think <laughs> you and EJ are doing a great uh, job. Norm just mad because why is he mad at a... you? He got your painting. You yeah. painted a picture <laughs> for him. He's your best yeah. friend. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought in, I had this vision of Norm in my head that he was uh, like Fat Vince Vaughn, and he was cool. <laughs> and he, we one why day Fat Vince Vaughn. That's how I just thought of Norm from the chat room. I just from his oh, jokes, Norm's, his personality. I knew he looks nothing like Vince Vaughn. <laughs> I know. I didn't know that yeah. until yesterday. He and, looks more like we have a specific. Like, mm. like type of person that listens to the show that is like morbidly obese and covered <laughs> with tiny, like Chinese fry cook hair. <laughs> you know what I'm talking uh, about? Yeah, 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 yeah like yeah. big with a wispy beard. Yeah, 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 yeah. big yeah. Florida. Oh, yeah, wispy beard. it's like if you could grow that type of hair all over your body, you just become a ginormous lint ball, <laughs> human <laughs> lint ball. That's what <laughs> listens to our show, human lint balls. <laughs> It's a, you know, it's a, like a little uh, Florida fat yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's <laughs> my rap name. What are you doing? You, I told you not to talk about that until the EP comes out. Uh, anyway, oh, Florida yeah. fat uh, right. okay, It's coming 2022. It's going to be I have no awesome. idea. Move on, EJ. Norm's making <laughs> okay. fun of me now. <laughs> and he can't read it because oh. he, he left his leopard print <laughs> Sally Soltex. Jesse Raphael glasses in the office. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Butler, bring, in, story, bring in me my glasses. <laughs> Have you guys heard the story about the guy who had his chastity belt ransomed against him? 
Ransom, uh, chastity belt. Okay, Come on, what are you? You okay, get, you're bringing us uh, a... news from the Middle Ages. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, it, this is crazy. Okay, he he owns a uh, it's a Q I U I cellmate, and what it is is a chastity melt for a guy, but it's chastity to the melt internet. is what you want because you're big fat. <laughs> <piece of ass>. <laughs> <Florida>. <laughs> it's a chastity melt that's hooked up to the internet, and usually it's played for used for like dom and uh, submissive play. So you can only unlock it if your dom says it's okay. And ah. she gives him the password. And this guy, it got hacked. So it wouldn't open up. And they, they said, you can only open it up if you send us $1,000 in Bitcoin. No, this well, was, what, well, hold on. Way open it up. What's it, it made out of? Yeah. You just get a pair of bolt cutters and cut it off. Yeah, it's a diaper, right? You just slide <laughs> yeah. it off. Like the My chassis. Like, what it's it? not a foolproof diaper that you're locked into. Like, like that. Look at that thing. What is it? Oh, hold on. I gotta. Oh, what is that? It looks like a golf bag. It looks like a, <laughs> like a, it looks like a it's Coleman kind of like a sleeve, I guess you put it in. Oh, okay. It, it looks like a golf bag. Oh, I can't do yeah. it that way. Uh, That's I thought, not going to work. I thought <laughs> Coleman coffee mug of a camping coffee maker. <laughs> That's dumb. So, oh, you put your. Uh, your dom unit in there. Yes. Uh, oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Jesus! What is happening? Uh oh! Oh my god! I killed everybody. <laughs> Playing again. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, wrong. the, the volume was okay. Oh my god! Time. What did I do? <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, there. Oh, there it is. So, so it doesn't actually go around your body. It just goes around your business. The it's front, yeah. And it, I guess it's snug. And the only way you can get it off is if you, it's hooked up to the internet, so it's Wi-Fi enabled. So it can get it only gets unlocked if it gets the password from either your person or yourself. No, well, you, oh my God. but you can. I mean, there's got to be some fail safe button that uh, like emergency override, right? Or no, it's just like I don't know if, if you know. Well, because it's it's his kink, I guess, and that's what he's into. And if, even as he get it off, it wouldn't it wouldn't be into his fantasy type. I guess is the only thing I can make sense of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, yeah, someone hacked it and and like requested that he sent him a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. Did he do it? <laughs> uh, no, yeah, he what's the result here? He talked to contact the company, and the company just unlocked it for him. Oh. Oh. Still, well, this is a non-story. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Sam. I appreciate you. I, uh, I, that's why Sam's here. Yeah, yeah. I like so it. Just lean in and be like, and that's a non-story. Yeah, but it's an interesting story that, okay, you're using a chastity belt that's hooked up to the internet. Why? Like, well, I mean, people just use, do, like, I mean, you, like, have a, you have a Pokemon phone rocker for Christ's sake. <laughs> yeah, 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 they're, <laughs> yeah, they're worse. They're stomping. There's yeah. the tying. There's kicking. The kicking is the, the one that bothers the, the me. The Twizzlers. I mean, there's, I mean, this is just, this the is. The Twizzlers is weird. This is mild compared to yeah. Twizzlers. Camping is the new one is camping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently hot girls just love going camping and they film their pornos. They don't have heads anymore. <laughs> it's just girls and then their husband. This is what the pandemic's done. People are now. Their job is to do headless porno. What do you mean headless? They, they don't they, show their. Faces. They don't show their face because they don't want yeah. their smart. coworkers to yeah. know. It is sort of smart, but I need. Right. I'm a face guy. I gotta have a face. Oh, I gotta really? be able to look I in your eyes you. and understand that you know you've made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to look in your yeah, eyes right. and, and I have to look in your eyes and see you doing that delicate dance of is he a midget? Is he not a midget? I don't really know what he is. <laughs> He's halfway there. He might be. He's not. I don't know. He's there. I did it. Can't take it back. Can't take it with you. <laughs> what? What do they say? Uh, yeah, 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 Eat your veggies. Oh uh, yeah. Right. Smoke <laughs> weed every day. I don't know. There, yeah, there is an element of like you once you've shown your face, we realize like you no know, going back from here. <laughs> like yeah, you know what I'm saying. And once see, I've seen and it, see when the girls, everybody's that, seen and it. And here's the thing: when you do that, you got to go full on. You can never dip your chin down. Because if I get a little bit of the chin and sl I see the look, oh, you got a parrot nose. Okay, well, I can't do it now. <laughs> On to the next. What else you got, EJ? Uh, I, oh, so, well, since we're going about weird stuff, uh, have you seen the new Resident Evil trailer for Resident Evil Village? No. Uh, With the like, tall lady who's oh, like the really big, tall and she's big, kind of attractive, but she's kind of trashy looking. The old big boob <laughs> vampire that's like eight feet tall. Yes, the big boob vampire. They uh, 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 they said exactly how tall she is. She's nine foot six. What? Yes. Uh -oh. Yeah. And the tallest man ever is eight foot 11. So she's taller than the tallest man. Yeah, but it's and, fake, too. But she's yeah. kind of attractive if she was real. Yeah, but all those games, they do a little bit of fan service where you ever been playing a video game and then... Like you get to the big boss and it's a it's like a succubus mean witch woman, but mm -hmm. for whatever reason, she uh, puts on a leather bustier and looks <laughs> amazing. And I'm like, well, I wouldn't fight you. I'd be I'd probably put my sword <laughs> down and go talk. Make to some you moves from, on yeah, it. Try to. The get, lady's uh, name is Lady 
Oh man, Dimitrescu? Dimitrescu? Now this I don't may know how to say it, so. this may surprise you guys, but uh, I am a fan of the Resident Evil uh, series. Hold of on movies. a second, I'm having a mild heart attack. Really? Because I did play that in college on PlayStation. Um, the this is before Crystal and the, you know school. what I figured out for is you. Is this when, the Frog Pajamas you were no, playing? No, 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 no. You know I figured out why Crystal might have such a problem with the video games, and we've talked about it openly all the time. Yeah, you, when you get one, you get sucked in, and you have that same thing that you say Max has, right? Like that yeah, addictive getting, personality. Yeah, 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 so yeah. when I gave you Call of Duty years ago, and you and the Grizz got addicted to it and wasted a whole weekend, yeah. you ruined it basically for your sons. Uh, yeah, well, now they're addicted to it, and uh, there's no going back. Uh, well, no, it's <laughs> the best thing in the world. Video no. games are awesome. Um, so, uh, so I didn't know you liked Resident Evil, dude. So they're coming out with another Resident Evil movie. No, it's a t- it's a video game for like PlayStation Five and Xbox One. Ah, okay, and uh, and then it's still and, and it's so realistic. That's that's why it's like it's interesting to see what she looks like. Now I can't remember like the Umbrella Corporation, and there's multiple ones, and like you know, it's like Walking Dead at a certain point where they just came out, would come keep coming out with sequels, and they just had to like start making up. Uh, yes, spinoffs. They're like, well, I know you destroyed the Umbrella Corporation three movies before this, but there's another one, right, and that's a, yeah. there's yeah. a South America division. That's what Saw does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just yeah. you're just making up whatever. You have a series of copycat killers all across the globe. So it's the same thing, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's fine. I Zombies just wanted to bring up the monsters. attractive lady that's in the show. Hey, Sam, oh, since story. you are a tolly and mm. uh, and you're always looking for uh, an excuse to dress up, I don't know if you've, seen, costume. if you've seen this chick. She's cool looking. Yeah, just throw that. I know. What were you last year? You were the girl from... Um, from the Magicians, yeah. Y- yeah. High King Margot. High King Margot. So, you know. Mm. Put that in there. Maybe you, mm. all you need is a top hat and some heels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What else you that's got? It's a pretty easy costume. Uh, did you get the video I sent you for? Uh, did you send one? it Facebook or? I emailed I it, it to you guys. I think I sent it to Sam. All right. What is it? If she sent it, I'll find it. Okay. Well, it, it's you know how they intercut movies on YouTube. Explain that. Yes. Okay, like they they take one character from from one movie and then put it in another movie and like kind of deep fake it, slice it as if it's it part in. of the movie. Okay. Yeah. yeah, like it's just one of the interesting videos I found this week, and it's Pee Wee Herman in Jurassic Park. So they replaced every dinosaur in Jurassic Park with Pee Wee Herman. Um, Travis is screaming from the other from the office ah! that you, oh! you stole this from him. Yeah, I, well, he think us, he put it up. Yeah, most of these stories, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, you sold all, all these stories in Butler Water a second. <laughs> well, As if but- Butler was the only one that shared it. <laughs> then Butler yeah. should be doing this bit, right? <laughs> yeah, it was also a Nerdist, which he took it from there, too. So, okay, whatever. So, it's Pee Wee Herman and Jurassic Park. Yeah, yes. so, like, when uh, Nedry gets eaten, Newman from Seinfeld gets eaten, it's, it's uh, Pee Wee Herman instead of a Dilophosaurus. Okay. Oh no, this is <laughs> Tiffany Haddish. Sorry, I pulled the wrong story. That's, hey, don't. Let, sh- let me secrets. let Uh-oh. me go back. Hold on. Now I got the nerd jug one. Hold on. I got to copy this one now. Now copy paste. It's this is just someone basically taking Pee Wee Herman, cutting him out of the, yeah. his, the taking movie. Taking scenes from Biggie's that face. Biggie's. That <laughs> Pee Wee's big house. Hmm. Mm. Okay, hold on. All right, go through this commercials because <laughs> I'm logged into the wrong thing. Okay, uh, there we go. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm an island off the coast of Costa Rica. And I've spent the last five years setting up a kind of biology. Well, they're just whispering in my ear, this is really and good. No da- <laughs> <laughs> he leaned in like that, Wait, like that comment. Hey, <laughs> what you're about to see, pretty darn good. Yeah, which, by the way, it's, it's, you're skewing it. Towards me hating it. Yeah, you really are. are. <laughs> Our attractions will drive kids out of their minds. What park is this? All right, Pee Wee oh, Herman okay. in Jurassic Park. This is what We've the. We've made living biological attractions so astounding that they'll capture the imagination of the entire planet. All right, he comes out of the Some egg. Just been suddenly thrown back into the mix together. Ah! Uh, 
I don't find this. No, yeah, this is I don't find this entertaining at all. I hate every second of this. <laughs> I yeah, I do too. You're gonna let it go. I hate I that whoever did this and wasted their time and life doing this. Yeah, this is dumb. I don't like anybody who likes this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, wow. it. that's all I'm saying. Wow. That's, that's my stance on it. It's a stupid waste of everything. Okay, then should we go to the next story? Yeah, so yeah, I think it's probably best. I think it's about? probably best. You made Tom very, very mad. <laughs> All right. Well, we can talk about either Screech dying or uh, Wakanda forever. Oh. Screech forever. Well, we know about Screech. It's yeah, like yeah, sad. It's kind of sad. It is sad. You know what's weird, though, is that how quickly... It was and, quick. Like, didn't he like get diagnosed like a month and a half ago? Well, that was three one, weeks. Yeah, time. that w- that was quick. But I think once you have stage four, I mean, who knows no, how well, long you had it, right? Sometimes, I mean, well, yeah, but sometimes uh, they they aggressively treat it with chemo and it slows it down to a crawl or whatever. You have six mm-hmm. months, or you know, yeah. it really it's like months, but. This, in fact, we know someone that uh, that it kind of happened like this. He got diagnosed with stage four, and then like weeks later died. And sometimes they just, and I think they try to treat it, and then they realize like yeah. it's it's too fast or whatever. Anyway, and sometimes they miss things, you know, like yeah. too. So anyway, um, yeah, we. Yeah. What I thought was odd though, I was gonna say it was how quickly I went to Peacock last night, and um. Instantly, they had remembering Dustin Diamond say by the bell everywhere, you know. And I was like, Oh my god, it was all over my Facebook, it was making me depressed. I was seeing so much death. Oh, for sure. They, so, the, I'll just spread it to you guys as well. They email yeah, me like, uh, start promoting Save by the Bell. And, you know, yeah. their team does it. It's yeah, like, yeah. Screech, Screech, Screech. Yeah. It's kind of gross a little bit. It is it's a like, little bit. Like, because a giant corporation that obviously didn't like, I mean, who knows if they uh, ha- liked him or didn't like him. I don't know any of the relationship. I don't think he was well liked, no. But, but um, they definitely are going to try to make an extra couple bucks off of uh, the publicity. Yeah. Yeah. Just, anyway. Well, I'm going to, just speaking of which, I'm going to re-release our oh, interview yeah, yeah. That's with it, That's different. How dare you? That's, did, a, that's, <laughs> that's yeah. for yeah. memorial. Well, that's yeah. memorial. I'm, I'm releasing yeah. it. I just died. Here, this is coming out. And every bit of money we earn from it will go to put the- Put a Porky's commercial. Yeah, <laughs> we'll go to the Little Tom and Dan uh, <laughs> Foundation. <laughs> Then we gotta hit oh, it while yeah, the iron's yeah, hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, uh, Dan, uh, your daughter's like five, right? I'd appreciate it if you'd never yeah, talk yeah. about my How daughter. How is he supposed oh, to know no, that? No, no. Yeah. How dare you? I don't know. My, my I don't go to the women's show. quarters very often. <laughs> How do you? I'm usually in the men's quarters with you know the heroes. <laughs> How do you? Okay, right, come on. Because I have a, a a show that's been driving me crazy, and I want to share it with you guys. Have you guys seen uh, Gabby's? I think it's Playhouse or Dollhouse. Gabby's Dollhouse. Netflix. Well, I was watching that this morning while I sat on the toilet. <laughs> Where everything's a cat in the show. Like, there's a cat pillow, and there's a rat cat, and then there's hamster kitties. No, and there's I have... a song that's been stuck in my head all week. Called I don't... Ha- it goes, hamster kitties. Meow, 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 meow. No. So it's stuck oh, in my head God. for the past four days. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Can we go back to that video we were watching? Let me go back to this Pee Wee. Let me put some Pee Wee on. I think your daughter would like it because my daughter loves it, is what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. You know, I, and I'll I want you to suffer like I've suffered. Okay, I'll put it on. I don't know this to be true, but I, I don't imagine like kid songs get stuck in like Elon Musk's head. You know what I'm saying? Like he's got five <laughs> kids. I don't <laughs> think he like this kids, maybe. You, you, nah, yeah, I don't see, I don't see I him being seen... like, I can't get this kitty song out of my head and I can't think about math. I think he just does it now i'm not saying he doesn't yeah. do it, but i don't see him interact with any of his children no you, you know, you know, I, see, yeah, no, I, see him, yeah. I, I saw something the other day with him playing with his boys uh that's a deep I, fake is he uh, oh was it oh, okay, <laughs> it was a deep is fake? it like conor oh. mcgregor with the the dump trucks for with his son at the beach have you seen that video uh no, no. what do we dump trucks they're at the beach i can see you and your sons doing this they're at like a uh, little back hose like huge like actually like construction grade backhoes, and they're at the beach and they're digging sand with uh, Conor McGregor and his son. Um, yeah, you gotta have a lot of money. I was money gonna bring it up that, a couple yeah. weeks ago before the fight, but I'm not gonna buy that. my daughter a thirty five thousand dollar miniature backhoe. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I think no, thinking. I think it was a rental. Like they rented it. He's, they have those places now. That's like a big deal. These like mm-hmm. industrial parks. I think we're getting one in Orlando where it's like Tonka for fat dads. Yeah, you, you go you, there. Yeah. You go, and then they have a bar on site. You can't obviously you can't imbibe before you run the equipment, but mm. afterwards you can go to their little bar area. It's like a Top Golf, but it's yeah, construction yeah, equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. 
Um, That's kind of cool, I guess. It's uh, or really dumb. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's All definitely right, we move over to Jack stuff. Gonna have a lot of real main construction workers talking mad ass. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Why would you, you do you that? You pay the, you know, yeah, like know. a guy that works a backhoe every day. By the way, um, you could probably just ask a buddy that has a backhoe. Yeah, he'll <laughs> let you do he'll it. He'll let you get in there, <laughs> yeah. whip it around well, a little uh, bit. Look, you if you palm him three <laughs> oxies, you're, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're you can whip the back backhoe. Yeah, if you palm him three oxies. Rent most of those machines down in Kissimmee all the time. Like oh. I used to rent a, a stump grinder all the time and make some extra money. One of the worst and <laughs> saddest stories. I don't know why I'm going to tell you. It's a fun job to do. The uh, there, stump grinding's fun, Tom. I, there's a story, and uh, just talk over it. <laughs> it's a a, a, fr- a buddy of mine had a uh, a friend or a family member. I forgot which. Um, he decided to dig his own pool. Right. And uh, at least mm-hmm. do it like and then he rented a bobcat or whatever to do that. And, uh, uh, and cats don't dig very much. I'd get a dog if you're going to dig. And him and his brother in law were digging the pool. And the guy was like, he didn't really know how to operate the backhoe that well. And when he was digging, he swung the actual uh, bucket, like the bucket over yeah. and it hit it. It <laughs> hit, hit the, the house. Hit, no, his brother in law in the head and killed him. Oh, oh, like, oh my god! god. Yeah, hard, I told you it was oh, a horrible story. Gee, why would you say that? <laughs> yeah, because that took a happy turn Tuesday. Right there. I, I, know, I know. Oh, it. hold on, I'll pile on. I had a, a high school Come friend on. who was using his backhoe. <laughs> he was using some swampland, and the cab actually flipped over, and he got lodged in there with just a little bit of water, and he drowned in like four inches of water. Oh man! Oh. So, there you go. Hey, you asked. Yeah, yeah. And so anyway, the moral of the story happy is: Day. <laughs> be careful with uh, hardcore yeah. equipment you have no business using. Yeah. You know? It's like. Uh, uh, yeah, you go to the uh, OCLS and they can you can do the virtual uh, classes. Oh yeah, oh, yeah you yeah. can do that. Yeah. Can it's I a virtually safe way to learn? Can I virtually kill my <laughs> brother? <laughs> God damn it! I, mean, I hope can no it, one hears this. You put a Minecraft stick figure there. I just gotta. I hate him. I'm just gonna. I don't want to really kill him. I just want to whack his yeah. Minecraft character across the lake. Uh, what else we got, oh, DJ? Man. Should we, let's go over to the jock stuff now, I guess. Mm-hmm. Oh, don't tell uh, so excited. Uh, what should we start off with? Uh, should we start, start off with the Super Bowl? Yeah. And how uh, Andy Reid's interviews before the – have you seen Andy Reid's interviews before the Super Bowl? No. No, is he doing skits? No. The reason why is because they gave the each one of them uh, ring lights to, like, light them better. And he had his glasses, and it looked like he was – like circles on the middle of his glasses. Oh, the Andy! Time. Oh, big fat football nerd. <laughs> yeah, and he looked like Doctor Robotnik in it. <laughs> <laughs> Tom <laughs> loves Doctor Robotnik. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, yeah. And then there's like memes of, of him, like what you see, and it's just his picture with the the lies over his face. And then it's another one with like X's and O's all over his face, and like doing routes and stuff like that as a coaching. I just I wish this wasn't news. It's... I wish the news was an actual story, not. Andy Reid had ring lights in his eyes. So, I feel like okay. there are probably better stories. EJ, yeah, well, there is a better story. Well, should we talk about Gronk and how he cheated on his uh, uh, off-season workouts? Yeah, let's talk about that. That's very, that story? Yeah, it's very Gronky. It seems like it's more work doing the same stuff. All you had to do is just do it. It'd be easier. Well, either way, he's still doing the exercises, right? Yeah, he's doing the exercise, but yeah. he did them all in one day, and he just changed his shirt. Which is actually for each run. That's what, how it's stupid a, he is. It's more impressive, right? Uh, well, no, that's yeah, he how dumb he is. He did more sprints in one day than he did if he would have done all of them yeah, over but the time. He, he doesn't think that he's doing the same amount of work. That's how stupid Gronk is. <laughs> well, yeah, why is it cheating? Why I don't that I re, I scanned through the story and I didn't understand how this was cheating, and then I also get mad at every every Facebook and internet story has misled leading uh titles and i'm mad mm-hmm. at all of them and so i'm like almost i read the title and i'm like i immediately think it's not what they're uh portraying you know what I i'm saying i wouldn't say it's cheating but i'd say it's smart because you get it all done in one day and you don't have to waste your time every single day doing it but it's the just thing like is, when you get all your not, assignments it, at the beginning of the semester, instead of doing, you know, tests and work each week, just get it all done at the beginning. The only problem yeah, that's is different when it's when yeah. it's classwork, when it's your body, you can't do that. Yeah, you, you shouldn't be doing time. it. You, you can't overload your body because then you're going to like break down easier. Yeah, you're actually you need it over time to do it. Counterproductive. And that's why it's kind of cheating. Because he did all of it in one day. Yeah, but he's just is changed shirts. So he's, 
No, it's not eh. cheating. It's just not. It's not the proper way to train. It's not following the assignment. He was told to do it every day. But we all know and... that he didn't go to Tampa because he wanted to train good. He went there. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. He went Jeez there. Louise. Yeah, and he and he accomplished his goal. Yeah, I, good for him. I bet you he's he, he's not not going to play next year, right? This is I don't think him. so. I'd yeah. go out this year. Yeah, I mean, he yeah. made it back to the Super Bowl. I think Bowl. he'll play if Brady does. Yeah, if they win, he'll probably quit. But if they lose, he might come back. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, maybe you're right. I just, uh, I, don't, I don't know. It feels like you've got that. you got your publicity. Yeah. Go move on and do some Gronk stuff. You know, go get do the Gronk. So, what do you think, yeah. EJ, about the Super Bowl? I think that uh, the Chiefs are going to cover the spread. I think it's it's three and a half right now, right? No, or is it three? It's three. It got, it went down. Uh, there's okay. been a lot of money on Tampa. Um, a couple uh, big time bets. I know they made news. Like someone put two point three million on uh, on Tampa Jesus. plus three and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, but interesting enough, and the like the gambling stuff I listened to, it didn't usually giant bets It'll like move that move it. the lines. Yeah. It didn't move anything. And what that tells me is just a rich guy coin flip bet. You know what I'm saying? He's a rich guy from Tampa. Yeah. He wanted to make how, a big they impressive wait, bet. How do they wait? Do they do they dig into your past as a betman? Well, yes. They to see your knowledge level and then they weight it based on your, I guess, resume? So in the gambling world, there's been times where like these syndicates of basically nerds you with were talking algorithms. About this, yeah. And this has happened in the past before where they they've actually used celebrities to bet yes. through because mm-hmm. the books look at the celebrity like if uh this is a, a totally f- fictional but like sylvester stallone goes and puts a million dollars on some football team they're just looking at it like oh it's, he just wants to now he's backed by it's actually the syndicate's so money. it's like a hedge fund it's similar and it's a way because if it comes directly from the syndicates first they won't let them bet that much right, because right. they know they're using algorithms exactly. and stuff they have an edge they'll limit it and uh and second they'll for sure move the line if they know that huge syndicate money is on a certain team they know they got it wrong so they'll immediately move it when super rich guys just want some publicity and want to get their name out in Tampa Bay area i don't know if you know that that was the guy but they like make a big yeah, million it's a good dollar bet, example. yeah, just so they yeah. can watch the game and be that guy, that big D millionaire well, that made it. Kind of makes my stomach hurt. But. Yeah, wasn't there a guy from Kansas City last year that bet a lot of money on the game and he was just doing it to for publicity for his car dealership or something like that? Yeah, but it was to hedge a yeah, bet, and that that's was a, the hedged bet. The, and that's yeah. another thing we don't know. That could be a hedge, and it could be he bet big money for the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl at the beginning of the year at plus like uh, eight hundred or whatever it was, right, right. and then he. He has this huge money, and then of course to hedge it, you bet the other side, so you come away with whatever right. at the end. You know, although this doesn't seem like that because uh, I can't imagine he's hedging uh, two point three million dollars. You know, like uh, that's big money. But anyway, what um, else? Okay, yeah. still talking about football. What do you guys think about the the Stafford for golf trade? Uh, I think you're. I, to me, it was apples for apples. I was like, you think so? You think they didn't get a better deal with the draft picks? I mean, that's, the Lions did. I didn't they got look like two. I, I didn't look first at the picks. rounders and a third rounder. Or, I I only saw the headline. I didn't look at the picks. Yeah, because like next year they this uh, draft coming up, the Lions get their third round pick, and then for the next two years they get their first round pick. All right. He, so I think the Lions kind of made up better off on the deal because golf can get better, but I think Stafford is better than golf. Now, so I, I think it was kind of a fair trade. I'm going to ruin this segment by making a yeah. comment that uh, is it, it's not conducive to us talking about this in a fun yes. manner. Yes, but okay. uh, I assume uh, that Sean McVay uh, knows what he's doing, right? Uh, and knows way more than anybody who's ever making a comment on this, and probably has studied this trade and the tape and then Matt Stafford and the system he runs sure. and because he's mm-hmm. a football genius. I think we could all agree that this guy yep. knows more than they say. anybody commenting on this. So just for the fact that they did it, yeah. I'm going to say he probably thinks that it's a good trade. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. And yeah. my opinion on it is stupid well, for me Rams to even have talk all about. The pieces, and, and I think Matthew Stafford probably is the the one piece they could probably put him over the top. I think uh, it. I think it was an exciting trade in the fact that I like those kind of trades where like I like I like the Brady deal. You know, like I'm like ah, it switches yeah. it up. It makes it exciting. It makes it different. Now it's. Uh, EJ, we, we, we can talk about like what we've seen happen when teams win too much and make the playoffs too much and it and mm-hmm. over the years. 
Um, you can only luck out so many times over the uh, low dr- draft picks with yeah. New England, basically over 20 years of winning. And then you have decimated to fizzle out at some yeah. point. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then, yeah. And then you got Cleveland who had tons of first round picks and they've let them fizzle for years. So, so and, right. So, right. Well, that was a slow burn, right? It, it's become yeah, obvious. Like they're actually good for the first time in like, what, 30 years almost? Yeah. It looks like Sean McVay is basically putting everything on the table trying to win uh, a Super Bowl going for sure. because yeah. giving away all his draft picks and then he's like, all right, we, you know, he's only got a, a couple more wall. years yeah. with this you know, squad and uh, if he's able to you know, keep everybody healthy – then yeah. maybe you can make it's kind of like what Bruce Arias did with the the, the Bucks this year. 100 Brady. Yeah, you yeah. just started putting pieces together. What else you got? Okay, the last story I have is: uh, Have you seen Tito Ortiz and what he's doing lately? No, he was MMA fighter married to Jenna Jameson. Yes, he was. Tito, and you know what he's doing now? You know, I honestly do not know. I know he looked like a thumb. He <laughs> is the city council mayor pro tem of Huntington Beach. That's nonsense. Now, could you imagine that? Like, you're going to a city council meeting, and Tito Ortiz is the guy in charge there. It's... Would you believe that? It would be like Seth being on on the council for like downtown. Listen, my buddy, the Wizard, was on in the Gainesville City Council oh, at one point. Nothing. It's all a oh, bunch. My God. It's all a yeah, bunch. Yeah, but Huntington Beach is currently voting to remove him. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to get rid of him. Yeah, why? Of course, someone's coming. Is I because go. he's a uh, he's an anti-masker. Oh, uh, just an MMA dodo. <laughs> it was oh, a it was a punchy yeah. dodo. Oh, we got to vote the thumb out. But it doesn't, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It's all whole this is nonsense. Everybody's a part of uh, yeah, these city councils. Stupid. Are all they're everybody who's in in charge of their homeowners association. Oh my they're, god. Uh, old, they asked me to be on the town home yeah, association. They're all nosy neighbors uh, that sit there and uh, squawk at each other about nonsense. Like that's all this is, right? Are you talking to EJ? Because he dipped know. out. I don't know. He's he the out. Oh, God. Oh, God. He's, Toshiba. He got caught by his boss again. Oh. It's friggin' Toshiba again. I was like, this time I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> caught you this time. <laughs> and what is this thing rocking behind you? It looks like some sort of a space age cuckoo clock. So, Sam, what do you think about the Super Bowl? Uh, hard to say. Um, I'd like for Bucks to win. I think it's going to be um, a pretty good game. I think it's going to be a good matchup. It'll be close, I think. I don't think it's going to be a blowout, basically. I came up with this theory last night. and oh, I thought you were going to tell her your bet you wanted to do. Well, I am. I'm completely I'm inappropriate, st- Samantha. Bet. I'm still trying to think of it. I don't know yet because I'm still trying to – because I know which – That's the first thing he said to me this morning. He's uh-huh. like, I'm going to think of a completely inappropriate Samantha <laughs> bet. No, he didn't say that. So, But the one gambling uh, bet that I have that I'm coming up with this theory – is uh, I have a theory on the under, right? Follow me here. It's 56 and a half points right now is the total, and that's pretty high, right? That is very high. And obviously it's high because of Brady Mahomes, mm-hmm. the, uh, you know, these high-powered offense mm-hmm. and stuff. But um, Brady can chase a if – he's, if he's not in the lead, he'll chase it and get there. Also, the fact that the public is heavy on the to- – they love betting overs. No one likes betting unders, no. by the way, because it's not as fun. And It's I like- not sexy at all, is it? Like I talk to Cabin Boy all the time, and he hates betting unders, and I'm like, don't, don't be an idiot, yeah, Just, but like, don't likes, be a square. He likes <laughs> like flashy betting, and uh, and I started looking at the weather, and I'm gonna talk to Mike from Mike's weather page about this yes. because there's a cold front coming in, right? And it, there's like a 70%. It's already cold. Yeah, well, it no, sucks. I hate the weather no, today. Now, of course, the cold it doesn't matter in Florida. It's like even if 45 yeah, Brady, it's not really that, that, cold. That, that's not cold for football at all. Like it has to get down into the, the low 30s for yeah. it to be affect the game. And even then, uh, really, it's wind. But On anyway. Negative three. But if that cold front comes in and it's rainy and windy, and I know that Brady's used to playing in bad weather and stuff, and Mahomes can play in bad weather, but still, that has an effect a little bit. You see what I'm saying? Like, if it's rainy, it's going to have oh, on a rain. super high total. Like, For sure. You know, you might hand drop, off drop passes, 10 more times than you yeah. do some drop pass, wet ball. To, Fumble. I guarantee more that takeaways. the total would be bet down if there's a like a higher percent chance more of raining. More injuries, possibly. Yeah, and, and so, you know, sometimes rain doesn't affect scoring. It's been proven throughout years of gambling wind does and the wind's not that high 10 to 15 all i'm saying is that if it has a three-point effect 
uh, you have a edge yeah, on the under. I could definitely see that. So when I talk to Mike, I'm going to ask him what he thinks if that front. Now here's the problem: if that front comes in early and then a beautiful 45 degree degree clear night, wow. then it's just like perfect football weather and you're screwed. But, uh, but I, don't know. I think my my bet would be perfect if it's perfect football weather as we sit. I feel like Patrick Mahomes can get her done with his team. Mm. But I would prefer, and I know it pains other Atlanta Falcons people to hear me say this, but I would prefer Brady to win because Tampa's up the road and I got a lot of Tampa friends. So I got to root for my friends. I uh, I also would put my money, although I, I, I'm not confident enough to put any sort of big money on the You Chiefs. never do the big it's it just um, it, unless and but the problem is turnovers, some problems. Uh, Mahomes gets sacked. He gets another like he hurts his toe and he's limping around. Yeah, we've all seen that. He's <laughs> got a good defense or another concussion. Yeah, yeah. You, well, you've all seen that uh, you know video of Mahomes. He's doing that little limp and walk into the huddle, and you're like, no, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. like, and then because I bet on Mahomes in that situation. Now he sometimes gets it done. But uh, if he's hindered at all, then you know on the other side, you know Brady has the experience and the and, and the weapons to go down there and methodically Absolutely. score. So uh, it's too close. Should be fun. Although I would bet the under, and there's tons of props. Um, and I'll I talk thought we were doing bit. some prop bets together. You got to send me some. Well, you could uh, go. You could. There's hundreds and hundreds online. You could find any and any of those bets. Uh, you know, as long as you find them online. How much money are we giving her? Well, we were both going to bet a hundred bucks okay. on each prop bet, and then whoever made the most, most money, money at the end, uh, I feel like uh, gets then, what? I don't know yet. I, the grand Samantha, prize you think about, of a Tesla Model Three. <laughs> you think about what my punishment could be. Oh, uh, broomstick in the old. <laughs> I, I want to go old school. I thought about. Let me break a bat over your head. See, I thought about just a straight up money line. You take Bucks, I take Chiefs. Uh, straight up well, bet because the, that's what's the bet though. I don't know yet. I don't. You know, I have to figure out how ninety. Oh, you you're already get making up. the actual bet boring, so you got to make whatever you win <laughs> great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, listen, I, you know, I don't know. Samantha's not one to like, you know. Humiliate She's not a jokester. Right? No, <laughs> she don't want to do that. I don't not put a butler. Her, I don't want to put her in that position. You know, butler will humiliate yeah, all day guy, long. Yeah, he loves it. Yeah, yeah, he's wearing the costume. Yeah, he's be, peeking around the corner. He looks like Lowly Worm from the Richard Scary books. Yeah, I'm whipping his cod piece. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, he loves every minute yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah, he'll put himself out there. He don't care. Yeah, uh, I'm, but, uh, don't, I'm flushing his head in the toilet. I'm making a poop in the fish tank. But Samantha, I feel like uh, even the show is just a stepping stone for her to move on. Butler. <laughs> reached the pinnacle. Oh, without a didn't doubt. know where to go. Oh. Yeah. But Samantha's like, I don't want to do too many things that hinder my yeah. future career. I'm just going to stay this, get a consistent paycheck for a little while and <laughs> yeah, yeah. use it as a launching pad yeah, to yeah. what my real greatness. Maybe the Moms and Murder podcast will need a producer one yeah, day yeah. there. Uh, they got <laughs> but huge just, numbers. Just so you know, I will do everything in my power to ruin your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, don't yeah. burn me on this. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. burn me on this because I'll be old yeah. and I'll have a lot of I time on my you. hands. A yeah. lot of time on my hands. And, and then we're like, remember that bet you did with Tom? I had the first and I'm going to yeah. release it. I released the footage. <laughs> oh, it degraded. It was an old VHS tape. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, never mind. All right. Well, uh, it just uh, keep in mind, think of it. On Friday, we can reveal the bet. I uh, want to know why EJ left. You, I think he got yelled at. I boss. think he got busted. Yeah, yeah. I think he, he said, "Oh, gotta go," and then he hung up. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he has bosses because now, because for sure, his coworkers. Okay, think about it. You, you're bored as hell. Everybody works in office environment. Environment is literally can't be border, right? Like you're just miserable. You're like, <laughs> oh my god. And then so something like you, the, one of your coworkers is doing yeah, this, this thing. Right? Doing a secret TV <laughs> show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting, like because your regular mundane uh, day is horribly boring. Oh, Pokemon nerds doing a sport show. Yeah, yeah. So then you find you you catch wind that this uh, coworker is doing this thing at this time. Like it spreads around now the office. He's, uh, from now on, he has to stay there and has to get caught. <laughs> and then for <laughs> sure, someone doesn't like him and then is rats ratting him out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, he's in there doing it. For sure. And, he's and up, she walks in just as he's putting his laptop yeah, down. Yeah, And then she's like, what are you, you doing? You needed Show. to see me? <laughs> what were you doing? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, it's, he's talking to Toshiba about, you know, the documents. This is going to ruin his life. And I'm, oh, yeah. I'm going to feel a tiny bit. <laughs> well, it's already bit. ruined our show. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right. You know, uh, that that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, t- Other people, Remy'd power on there until they made him clean his <laughs> desk out. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah He'd yeah. stay there until the police were tasing him in the parking lot. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. 
Welcome to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. Samantha is on the line live via the Zoom. Hey, Sam. Hey, what's up? Let's wear Job Wednesday, buddy. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Tom wanted to do a bit. He called it Weird Job Wednesday. Dan really likes it. Tom says that's bullshit. It's another Weird Job Wednesday. What are you doing? What is your job? Are you neat? Are you tidy? Or are you a fat slob? Do you make lots of money and you sit up in your tower looking down on all the people who are working by the hour? It's a Weird Job Wednesday. Just another Weird Job Wednesday. Oh yes, it's Weird Job Wednesday. Just another Weird Job Wednesday. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Weird Job Wednesday brought to you by Streamline Mortgage Solutions, StreamlineFlorida.com. Come bang! Talk to Brian Zymel and his team. Literally, Brian sends us, me and Daniel, a text of a new... Uh, positive, Two great or review. three a week. Yeah, and uh, at least one a week. Sometimes more than that. And they're detailed. They're long. This person actually said he enjoyed his refinance. That he had done it in there the past, go. and he dreaded it because it was so tedious. And Streamline made it enjoyable for him mm-hmm. because they were so uh, well, organized. They, they do and most everything. They don't really do much. Yeah, listen, pretty easy. Brian is the most. He's, he's the proest businessman that I've ever met in my entire life. Like he's so on top of every single thing. If uh, you want the uh, proest, <laughs> go to where you knowest. Streamline. God damn it. I knew it. Victor, are you there? I am here. Brian actually refinanced our house. Oh, oh you wow. saved him. You saved him. <laughs> I'm not gonna let that I happen. I knew I liked him, you Victor. You saved him, Victor. That is a f- <laughs> bold lie you just told no. to save your best Tom friend. was dead on by far the proest. No, 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 no. Oh, you're Victor, you're my <laughs> enemy now. Worst <laughs> caller ever. Proest isn't even a word. So, <laughs> God damn it. Oh, I, uh, those are those things that I started second guessing. Hold on, I'm going to do something <laughs> heartfelt for my good friend and client, Brian. Oh, man. Wait till Pro-ish. I, oh, God. When did I tell you about this business meeting on Friday? I'm going to save it to Friday. No. But I couldn't get... I had to rip my computer out. Oh, yeah. oh. I, was, I was here by myself. Oh. I was screaming. Oh. Oh. And you oh, hate calling me. And I, I should have hung out. And you're like, there were eight people on the line. And they were all the president. I almost ran upstairs and <laughs> <laughs> talked to the Asians. Because I was going to be like, you know this. That's right? racist. Help, help. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, Victor, what is your weird job? So, uh... It was about, say, 13 years ago. I was 25, 26, and I was an oriental rug salesman at a high-end furniture store. All right. Uh, Can we say that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is what? it? Is, is that it a, it's still? It's about a product and not a person, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, there's a lot of racist products, too. <laughs> if you just throwing it out there. Those are just cool. So, Victor, uh, how did you become the oriental rug salesman? Well, you you gotta gotta go you're an idiot. You got a promotion from Tupac <laughs> rug salesman. You know that. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Go, it, the order goes Scarface rug, Tupac rug, Oriental rug. How does that work? So uh, my wife worked at Robin Stuckey, which was uh, the furniture store here in Orlando. I always think of candy and when I think of Robin Stuckey. <laughs> she was a salesperson designer for like the furniture, and they had an independent rug section. And when she was bored, she would just go like hang out with the people in the rug gallery and they needed some people and I was working, I've worked in restaurants my whole life since I was like 15 and um, I was working like at Olive Garden and um, she asked if I wanted to go over there and work part time so I did that and I was what they call a porter which is, so when you have a rug gallery there's just piles and piles of these oriental rugs and if people want to see the one on the bottom, you got to get two people to flip them. They're like, you know, almost 90 pounds each. So they have a bunch of young strapping dudes there to flip the rugs for these millionaires. And after working there for a couple of years, the salesperson that was there left. And 
I was the next obvious choice, I guess. I was trying to flip my wife's rug last night, but it ain't 90. We're talking about closer about a 175. So you literally started flipping rugs (laughs) and then worked your way up to uh, head salesman or rug salesman? Yeah. Yeah. So You can throw away your rug flipping gloves. I... I've had few experiences with rugs, but the one, the experience that I've, I've had, I've been very upset about the prices of rugs because they're very oh my expensive. God. Yeah. My wife. And like, we, we inflated the prices massively too. So there's that. So my wife would, like, would go to the store, to the furniture store. Bulk of bargoons. And she'd be like, we're, like, <laughs> we're going to need a rug. This, And then I'm like, all right, what is that going to be? Like 180 bucks? Or, you know, yeah, I think rugs should be free. Is it, 800 like it was just yeah, insane. Yeah, insane. I'm like, what the? Why? I looked at one that's Tom, an outdoor. That, Tom, that's a cheapo rug. Yeah, I looked that's at it. Yeah, rug. yeah, no. But... I looked at an outdoor runner rug for my balcony. You've seen my balcony. It's yeah. small. Yeah, yeah. The rug was like twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm insane, like, you're yeah. crazy. And then I'll put a piece so the of the average price. The average price for like your living room size rug, nine by twelve. Our average price is about seven thousand dollars. Oh my God! Yeah, I'm not doing that. Now, what is and the how difference? Do you, how do you clean a rug? You got to beat it with a brush or something, right? No, just vacuum. So, oh. uh, tell yeah, us about who makes like a, what's the history of Oriental rug and who makes them? Why are they so expensive? So, the uh, the main reason they're so expensive is because there's some little kid in India sitting there. Knit, tying knots in every single one of those fibers you see sticking up. Well, I'd rather buy that kid than the rug. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, that child slavery is supposed to be cheap. <laughs> I'm like, why is yeah. it more expensive? If a scientist, if an old man scientist was doing it, then I'd be like, oh, I understand. <laughs> but if a poor child in an yeah. impoverished country is what doing do it, need? like, what are you paying him? Eight cents an hour? Who cares? Yeah. It should be cheap I mean, labor. I'll give you $50 for it. Now he's rich and I have a rug. If American Joe is signing, <laughs> then I'll be like, oh, of course it's expensive. American Joe I'm did sorry, it. sir. That's an, ex- that's an American <laughs> Joe original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some poor Indian kid uh, should be dirt cheap. Well, I don't know what to tell you. You made him uncomfortable. <laughs> you made sorry. him uncomfortable. He didn't realize you were messing around. He thought you were serious. He freaked out. <laughs> Everybody's always says like, oh, it's because it's handmade by impoverished uh, I don't care if it's handmade. Child I just want labor. it to last a long time. I'm like, isn't in chi- impoverished child labor super cheap? Yeah, like, but, but, but one cent an hour. You understand my point yeah. is I don't care if something I'm going to step on gonna is gonna... handmade. Mm. I don't care. Make it. Like, it can be. Have, yeah. Yeah, Machine. Make it, yeah. Make uh, uh, the T2 make it for me. <laughs> That's great. Even better because so, I put my feet on it. It's handmade. Is there anything special about the material? Uh, most of them are all wool. There are some with like silk inlays in them, and those are like like ten grand a piece. Oh my, oh my god. god! Silk inlays. Now is are these are like sultans and like swamis? Yeah, yeah. And people that wear amulets. Who's got a spooky like, ass people who live in Alec Lake? Sure. Yeah, yeah, but well, you, like old ladies, like yeah. you know, I don't have one friend, not one friend, and I know hundreds of people. I don't have one friend. I go to their house, they got an Oriental rug, not one. Yeah, yeah, because you got to live in a big ass spooky mansion and get an Oriental yeah. rug. You're like, what is this? Uh, like ghosts uh, live around here. My mom had Oriental rugs. Are they worth anything? Um, if they're in good condition, yeah, probably. Yeah, a so lot of dog pee pee on them. So. Is there a particular designer that's well known? Because just like anything that gets into this high uh, Doug price, Ruggs. there's like designer furniture, designer <laughs> drapes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You get designer rugs. So is there like somebody's name that they are attaching themselves to these rugs? Uh, no, generally like they're old, you know, ancient designs that are, you know, just recreated over and over and over again by you know, the tiny children. There are, like, designer rugs, but those are usually machine-made or what they call tufted, so it's got, like, a layer of cloth on the back, and those are cheaper. So what's the most expensive rug that you sold, and what kind of questions do these rich people want to know about these rugs? Like, how do they what shop? What is the thread count of <laughs> yeah. this rug? Because I'm sure you have to deal with that's, a lot of... That's the thing, yeah. yeah. How many tassels <laughs> does it have on its posterior mm-hmm. edge? Knots per square inch is kind of how you judge the quality of a rug, so how small the knot is. The, the smaller the knot, the more knots per square inch and the more it's worth. Um, we sold a rug to some millionaire, billionaire who lived in uh, he lived in Texas, I think, and then he 
had a house near UF, and he would fly in for all the games. He lived on a lake, so he'd fly one of those little um, pontoon planes. Make land. sure you got my Hong Kong rugs down there, because I need to, you know, that's what I like when I go down there to go Gator. He didn't care what it looked like as long as it had orange and blue in it. And oh, he had unlimited Classy. money, so we just found the biggest, most expensive one we could, and it was like $24,000. Oh, $24,000? This is beautiful. Go Gators. Yep. Where's my Yeti cup? Now, this is what... I, this is what makes me mad about rich people is, like, I imagine if I was, like, you know, I understand they have unlimited money. It doesn't matter. Buy everything the best, and that's what you do, right? But why do they even take the time to care they about don't. all these stupid details? And, they, like, who's He's not. He just said, give me a blue and uh, give me the most expensive yeah, blue. Generally, generally, they don't. So they have, they have their interior designers that pick out most of the stuff. I'd say a good 75% of the uh, people we sold the rugs to Never even looked at them until they were in their house yeah. on their floor. Ah, so there's just some sort of employee that's, that's paid to design their house or decorate their house. Yep, exactly. Now, do you have a lot of rug knowledge? Because i got to tell you, man, I've been looking at some runners and some rugs for my house, and it is kind of hard. I'm actually being serious, Tom. It's kind of hard to find rugs, find rugs that, like, because now like there's trendy ones that are, like, machine washable, and then there's expensive ones and then there's eco friendly ones and hipster ones and like i don't know where to go for a rug should i get it custom made to the dimensions i want like what would be a good price so pretty much all the questions you've asked me are my extent of my rug knowledge nice all right oh the, oh, the ones we asked you before <laughs> all, all yeah. those questions yeah. daniel just said he doesn't know you got nothing. no 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 he's out of knots so um my- how many, like, what do you, what does a store buy it for? And, like, the, what's the markup on these things? So, we were an independent, like, gallery release space in the um, furniture store. And I wasn't privy to, you know, the exact dollar amount that they bought these rugs for. But I know that we had, like, a set price that they wanted to sell it for. And then we marked it up about 25% from that. So, we could knock off 20% or 15% and still make what the goal was gotcha now these gentlemen and gentle ladies that i see on the side of the road that have the maybe a little more novelty or youth like <laughs> rugs that <laughs> the maybe they have a um macho man randy savage or a gwen stefani uh our death, Har- yeah. harajuku girls rugs uh, death row records yeah uh, thank <laughs> you Tupac, that baby. is a classic um, the suge knight death row records the person with the bag on his head being electrocuted <laughs> the, uh, in red death row font <laughs> oh. now how does one get those rugs and do you guys look down upon the dusty lot rugman <laughs> oh for sure yeah we're, we're way better humans than they are mm-hmm. now Far superior now is there a rug Doctor, I believe he operates out of uh, public. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, well, I didn't even realize I was going to make that joke, but like someone you said it, you surprised yourself <laughs> and you laughed as if you were doing stand up in your own mind. You did like a joke for yourself, and you were the audience too. And you were like, "Oh, good one, mate." Yeah. So, is there some sort of specialist that like? If you got this, you know, fifteen thousand dollar rug, and you dump some wine or uh, you ju- you dropped your oh, cigarette it on it all the time, can someone come in and then just replace that uh, thread oh, no, count no. by hand no. and then make it look like new again? Is there someone like that? No, I mean there might be, but I've never I've never heard of that. Usually, you just there's people who specialize in cleaning Oriental rugs. I'm sure there's like I don't know what you would call them uh, rug munchers. Uh, yeah, rug mu- no. Uh, I almost got you to say like, <laughs> I went. People who like restoration <laughs> the specialist or something like that, but I don't know. Gotcha, yeah. I just, I there's know. probably. I like, I said that. He's like, yeah, rug munch. God, Daniel, you idiot. There's, there's probably some sort of side business, some like old Indian guy that knows Why how to. has got to be an Indian guy. Well, I'm just saying, like, he racist, knows. Tom. No, yeah, I'm just that saying. Was racist. He did it as a boy. He came to the United <laughs> States. Oh, okay. He knows you're, you're, Okay, you're going with logic. All right, <laughs> and, all right, fair enough. He knows how to hand thread mm. these rugs, so if you burn. Because he did it. So if you had a party and someone dropped their cigar on the yeah. rug and burned it, then he comes in and replaces that thing. And he probably charges, like, because if, if the rug is $28,000, he could charge, uh, you know, $1,000 for one day of work yeah, to repair it, you know? Um, anyway, so 
Now, do you, is this a commission thing? Do you get like normal clients that come in and talk to you, and you get an X amount of commission? I think you for get regulars, rug? right? Yeah. So when I was working there, it was I was like twenty five, twenty six, and I was salaried plus one and a half percent commission. Wow! So I was making. Do you want to ask them? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Oh, this guy's going to lead that me, <laughs> oh, I like that. Spoon those. feeding. I don't want to. I don't want to blow it. I don't want to blow the joke. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, it's yeah, already blown. Yeah, yeah. What are you? What are you making okay. there, Victor? <laughs> I was making uh, forty-one thousand a year. No, I don't that. think that's I bad because I don't think you're stressed out at the old rug rug hut. Well, you got to work. We oh, it was for sure the easiest job I've ever had. Sam, what do you think of rug hut? It's good, right? Yeah, I think this guy wins. Don't. Victor, did you have a giant rug roll machine that is like you push the thing and, and then all the rugs are hanging and then it's like that oh. uh, conveyor belt of rugs. <laughs> I've always wanted to uh, mess with that. I, I remember we had like something like that at Home Depot and me and the Grizz worked there and it was for the wire. And then there was one for Completely different. carpet too. And yep. I remember I told them to climb up in there and I was going to. Uh, and hit you, the button. And like, run on it like a log. No, no, like it was going to be like a uh, Ferris wheel. He's going to ride it to the top. And then I almost crushed him and killed him. <laughs> <laughs> he screamed. He's like, my, I he's pinned his back up against the, the oh, you scaffolding behind yeah. him. And he's like, stop! And I stopped it and I had to reverse it. And I was, like, and for a and second, he I, fell out. I didn't think there was a reverse. And I thought I was going to squish him in half. And then I was going to oh, run out well, the no, door. You just leave him half squished. <laughs> you don't fully squish him. And Anyway, so did you have one of those machines? So it wasn't uh, electric, but there was uh, the big arms where we'd hang the rugs over top of them. But uh-huh. we would swing to and fro. Did you get a free rug at all? Occasion. Not free, but we got them at a discount. So what's a discounted rug for you? You're still blowing 500 bucks, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that, 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 that it's insane. Yeah. It, it, also, I'll like, just stick with my dirty apartment. Is it carpet. something that falls like the Oriental style, or is that like a forever? I'm rich... telling you, man. This is what my mom had. We talked about this yesterday. My house was Florida trash, Oriental everything. <laughs> everything. My whole house looked like Randy's <laughs> dojo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was That's all, my house. It was all whole yeah, why yeah. though. Why was Billy this... Bob's dojo was my house. It's my mom, she, had, she was obsessed culture? with that movie Shogun, or that sh- that show, uh-huh. and so she st- then she d- had started dedicating her life to karate, apparently. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what, is what it? old it's ladies a, do. It's weird. It, why did your mom collect all the seashells yeah, yeah. and everything well, that's right. America's that's called? That's Florida trash. Boats. Yeah, but so is, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's there that, is yeah. the other side is Florida Japanese trash. <laughs> yeah. And that's what my mom did. It's just a bizarre, like, the oriental <laughs> pattern and stuff. It's so we had a fake bonsai tree made of plastic, it's, Tom. Yeah, it's I like, think they, that people think it makes you fancy. It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah but then that is, it's like... There's a haunted house element, I'm telling you. Like, you know, there's that weird... It's like, what is this? It's a weird feel. Nobody in their 20s has oriental rugs, and very few people in their 30s, unless you're one of those... Those type of, of gals, normally it's a stereotype with gals where you're like a kitschy, almost like a hipster, where you really appreciate the things, you know, you're an old soul, yeah, and yeah. you collect, you know, like wrought iron furniture and oriental rugs and yeah, stuff that your grandma liked, kitschy old TVs. I'm not it, that guy. It's not even the most comfortable. Like, they make, like, better, uh, more technology, yeah. like uh, polymer material that yeah. you step on that's, like, cushy. Like, the oriental rugs, it seem to me, like, uncomfortable as hell. So what do you do now? Uh, so now I'm a stay-at-home dad. Cool. Um, I'm, a, I'm a chef by trade. So I'll do some um, catering events, and I work one day a week at a little local sandwich shop just nice. to help out. But I uh, pretty much mooch off my wife. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. That's my dream job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you really yeah, are the really winner. I play World of Warcraft and uh, pick up the kids. Man, does you're she, the winner. Does she ever make any comments about, like, you know, like, hey, the, I've noticed uh, the floors aren't very clean. You yeah. know, like, start you, because... Yeah, like, what's for dinner? And yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah. Fa- I thought we'd go out tonight again. Yeah, like, yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Does she ever throw shade at you? Oh, yeah, of course. She mm. crows it up. Yeah, okay. Crows yeah, yeah, yeah. it up. This guy's awesome. I, although I feel like uh, it's hard to uh, make comments when you're the uh, stay at home dad. Yeah, uh, and then the only, uh, I mean, you didn't, I'm 
virtually certain you didn't save any of your rug money. <laughs> and then also, it's like where well, your kid goes to school, right? You're like, yes. And so they go, well. So what are you doing? Then all you're day? just a uh, stay at home <laughs> during <laughs> like a five hour no, period. No, no, no. <laughs> dad. <laughs> yeah. Dad. I know you're technically a dad, but your your child at school, right? During being school, watched well, by but other then people. He's doing dad prep. Oh, okay. He has yeah, to, yeah, yeah. He yeah. has to read fatherly Grocery magazine. Shop. He has to stay on what's you know what's happening. Uh, uh, How to talk to your kids about COVID? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, grocery Go shop. Down. I level up my warlock in World of Warcraft. And, you know, <laughs> oh, oh, Do you have to hide it? You you have to hide the video games, right? Not everybody's wife? like you, Tom. Uh, no, well, no, no. She knows. She's been working at home since COVID started. And, oh, she's there know, with you. She's she's oh, oh that's, there's nothing that's worse than leveling up your uh, your warlock when your wife's sitting next to you, looking over your shoulder. You know what? This brings up a good point. Like, I bet you there's been a lot of arguments now from people. Like, okay, say there's one stay-at-home parent, right? How do you think I feel? I go home at lunch here, my <laughs> wife's there, and I was like, I thought I could start taking my pants off. <laughs> no, no, but then then the other, the one that works, has to work from home, and then they start uh, just observing. What the other one's doing all day, right? And that's got yeah, it. Yeah, the facade is up. I know what you do now. So now you got your work crow uh, keeping a watch over you. You yeah. got to pretend to work. Like I remember <laughs> when I worked at uh, at Champ Sports, uh, uh, stocking. I would stand there and just zone out and look up into the distance you most of here. the day. <laughs> yeah. But then anytime any like uh, sales associate or the manager walked into the back room, I'd pretend to diligently look at numbers up at the shoes, right? Like I was looking for something, <laughs> and they would <laughs> just think I was working I do, all the time. I do that sometimes in here with you guys. I'll talk. Yeah. And if you guys are doing something, and what I really want to do is surf like – a website for patio furniture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'll do is I'll be like, okay. I'll be loud about my accomplishments. I'll be like, okay, got that done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All so right, yeah, yeah, yeah. going next. To, I'm really just logging just into IKEA yeah, yeah, yeah. USA.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so do you have to uh, pretend to work a lot? Oh yeah, there's a lot of uh, running water in the sink pretending to wash dishes. Yeah, <laughs> he can, Tom can't do that. <laughs> yeah, he gets yeah, one yeah. squirt per dish. Oh, yeah, they, I get curled out if the water's running too yeah, long. Yeah, she'll I hear that. Know. What about a little afternoon delight? Oh yeah, every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. I say I don't get that. Mm, yeah, Never I, have. I, uh, that seems too fishy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are talking about? That's what I meant. All right, Victor. <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll we'll talk to you we'll soon. We'll be in contact. Yeah, yeah, we'll be in contact. <laughs> yeah. You're, uh, Did I win, you guys? Well, yeah. we'll uh, we'll let yeah. you know. Yeah. 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 Your I'll audition you was unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. No. <laughs> Let's start ending uh, it without <laughs> making them the winner. Oh, okay, yeah. Just yeah. keep them. I like that. Like yeah. if we keep it uncertain, then I feel like they'll be more apt to tune in every day to see if we'll mention them again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how we'll gain all our listeners. That's true, yeah. It's just all weird jump <laughs> It's a Wednesday. foolproof plan. It's all weird jump Wednesday people waiting to hear yes, if they want. and then we'll build them up, build them up, yeah, build yeah. them up, build them up. For years. And we tell our sponsor, we're like, we realize it's not a huge audience, but they're engaged. Yeah, they're, they're listening. Very, they're waiting. <laughs> yeah. They're waiting. They're, but one of them is going to be, when we do say the winner, one will be very happy. The rest will lose instantly. <laughs> I say the word engagement. How engaged are they? I'm not that. I, mean, I don't even know what that word means anymore. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We've said so many words <laughs> yeah, yeah. like we know what we mean that I don't even know what we know anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Does yeah, that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect. I read an email yesterday from our good friend Dan Cummins and his his lovely wife oh, Lindsay yeah, Cummins. Yeah. They I know had better than no that idea now. what they were talking about. I yeah. was like, "This is what podcasting is now." Yeah, they moved I was on. Like, I got a lot of work to do. They left. Uh, we did. We stopped paying attention. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's a whole new world. It <laughs> is. It is. They're doing this it's and doing that. And I there. was like, well, "How do I turn this computer on?" I was like, <laughs> yeah, "I don't know." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all everybody's doing these new things. Yeah, and I have a TikTok account. Not <laughs> one post. <laughs> oh, yeah, and yeah. and because of our good friend Jana Banana, mm. we now have a Clubhouse account. <laughs> not one post. <laughs> Is that real? I thought I was getting scammed. I got a bunch of clubhouse. They're like, join no, the clubhouse. No, it's Jana Banana. I signed yeah, up for it. Yeah, yeah. I have it. Oh my uh, God. What is it? I don't know, but I have it. I have that <laughs> yeah, and the TikTok. I have them all locked I, and loaded. I've been getting emails yeah. and a uh, clubhouse. They're like, I got them all. Like, this is for you. And I, I thought it was a pyramid scheme. I got them. all of them. What is it? I got a, I'm, I'm reopening our uh, Google Hangouts. <laughs> I got them all. Hold on. What is clubhouse? No <laughs> idea, but I have one. But is it a social it's media? It's wide open right now. <laughs> what, do you make posts? I logged on this morning and it like I did the thing and I signed up for clubhouse okay. and then there was uh then all these people started like i got all these notifications yeah, i'm just yeah. gonna start being honest with the stuff that we do yeah yeah yeah. and we can be dumb old man honestly yeah yeah 
So I'm like clicking all the buttons and I'm like, okay. And I got our name, Tom and Dan Live on Clubhouse. Yeah. And then it's like start a room. And I'm like, well, I don't really know what I'm doing. So I don't really want to start a room. But from what I gathered, it is an audio based chat room where everybody can talk at one time. That sounds <laughs> but miserable to me, but hey. Yeah. Everybody's just screaming. Yeah, so I go into one room that was like discussing new hip-hop. I'm like, all right, I love hip-hop. And I went into the room, and let me just tell you, it was <laughs> scream misery, loud yelling with some hip-hop play. It was just kids just screaming. Okay, yeah, just yeah, totally. right. And then I go, okay, that's how I'm going to promote myself from now on. I go. This is this is the future. Like, so you supposed to. Call. So I was like. So I'm laying in bed. I, top I, I, top it out. I have my sleep mask <laughs> on my head. I have the phone here. Where's my uh, phone? I had my phone. and This is exactly what I did. Yeah. So I hit the button, and it's everybody's like, yeah, you got mom, yeah, you. And everybody's yelling. Hip hop playing. And then I just start. Yeah, yeah. I just started yelling because I thought that's, that's the what future. you do. That's the future. That's what you do. That's, that's the clubhouse. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, I summed it up. All so right. if you want to find us on Clubhouse, for Tom and Dan Live, I'll scream at you in the mornings. <laughs> I check it in the mornings right around when you and I are getting up around 6.30. We, I'll scream at you. Can we just broadcast the show in there? I don't I think, know why you I do that. I think that would be what we would want to do. But like yeah. I said, I've only had one interaction with her. It's just me screaming in the hip-hop group. <laughs> then I went into another why? group that was a country. For whatever reason, all mine are music. Okay. Because it said pick your likes, and I picked show likes. Look, I didn't do this just for me. I did everything that we're all into. So I put a little bit of uh, sports, sports betting uh, for Butler. I put a little bit of nerd, Star Wars in there. For Samantha, I put live shows. I put punk rock. For me, I put some uh, Volkswagen on there, you know, because like, I've been looking at those. And then I put some bikes. Okay. So I tried to put everything on there. But for whatever reason, maybe because Samantha and I both like music, all of my like rooms were music rooms. And it was just people screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, it, it, so it's a social media? Mm-hmm new social media thing that's a craze right now and then you have to get in early and there, do people subscribe to your clubhouse Tracy in the chat is saying it's a public speaking app which makes sense for Jana so you just speak to an audience but everybody's talking at the same time well they they I should know. I think they should stay quiet it does just like zoom it lights up when the person's talking but in mine I had like too many a hundred yeah, yeah. teens and me, and they were all screaming, and then I screamed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which probably scared them. If well, that's the problem. Like, if you get, the, I think there's probably a threshold of the amount of people you could have in a Zoom yes. or a clubhouse. It's a clubhouse is an invitation only audio chat social networking app. I'm just saying, like, in the theoretically, it becomes chaos after a certain amount of people. Now, right? I would, yeah, now, do you so. want me to tell you like, the real? The yeah. real is I thought that, I thought that you were telling, I you were telling the truth right no, now. No, 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 no. I oh, am, but no. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> I Sorry. don't think I will use it to promote what we do here, but I did really enjoy the screaming. <laughs> How could you enjoy it? Because it, it's just chaos, and I'm like, <clears throat> what are they doing? And I just sat there, and it's stuff like that makes me laugh. You know I love it when stuff like that is just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what is this? It's garbage. I love. But what are we supposed to do with it? I don't know. Like, that's the thing. Everybody's like, know. you got to get on this. And I'm like, what do you do? Well, I, I've had so many people argue with me about, like, how tight is your LinkedIn? I'm like, well, I, I tightened it. So I, did, I worked <laughs> on that last year. I have a pretty tight LinkedIn now. Okay, yeah. Uh, so my wife says. And uh, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah, 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 what yeah. Are you, I don't know what to do. It's, well, I mean, I give you tips on how to do your podcast business. I don't have time to give you tips. I need tips from you to tell my. <laughs> I don't want tips. <laughs> give me all the tips. I don't want tips for you. Oh, oh, OnlyFans. Oh, well, let's That's do OnlyFans. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. You know, there's a bunch of God. We need to sell. There's our a bunch nude of nude bodies. There's a bunch of listeners in the Orlando area that have OnlyFans, and I found all of you. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah, <laughs> I have. Tell found, me one. No, I don't know. Do, do I have people... found all of you. I've subscribed to some of you. Oh, right. this is something that I, I know. download all of your pictures. I save them all. <laughs> do do for I? nefarious. No, I don't know. I don't subscribe to any of them. But oh. yeah, there are a lot of listeners that have I, OnlyFans. I like the amateurness mm-hmm. of that mm-hmm. kind right. of, you know. Sam, mm-hmm. do you have any buddies that have OnlyFans? Uh, yeah, I know a few people. Yeah, I do too. That it that's been normalized a little bit, right? Yeah. What do they do on it? It depends. Uh, some people. Oh, there's one person I know that does uh, like sitting videos. 
So she sits on different things. Okay. She's uh she's blessed in the in the back end area. Ah, so she's got a big ass and she sits on stuff. I, I'd pay for that. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm not mm-hmm. even into that, but I yeah, I'm you know. That's the key to find a particular kink that's popular enough where you don't have to do any nudity, but you just do some things that are ridiculous. I, was thought, I thought about but, making one and calling it almost a little person. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe you get there's... all of the kind of the exoticness of the little person. But because I'm not actually a little person, none of the guilt. <laughs> no, okay, I'm like yeah, the yeah, snack yeah. well oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of OnlyFans. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like you can have as much as me as you want. What do they want to see you do? That's the problem. Is it like? Probably nothing. <laughs> well, I think there's a thing where they want to see you perform with like an Amazon woman. That's a thing. Like l- tiny, big. I've seen those. I'd be willing to do that. It's but I just don't Japan. think Andrea would- She's pretty tall, though. Will, I could shoot it to make myself look smaller. Will she, like, if it's for money and just performance base only? We can do you... the head chop off thing that's real popular now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Will she do that? Probably not. No, <laughs> oh, no, yeah, it's going to be a big no go on <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, Why yeah. not, though? Yeah, I know. Like... It's an old stick in the mud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you want to be rich? This is yeah, what it yeah, takes. Yeah, yeah. You got to do, you got to, you got to put yourself out there. You got to do something. Just tell I it. can't be the only person making money in this relationship. I can't be the only person propping up the family. Oh, I figured out the bet. Samantha, the what? Super Bowl bet. I figured this out. Because it, okay. do- it doesn't hey, involve- did I, did I read the script? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all these guys. The leader all down the only yeah, yeah, yeah. get the things. You're, we talk about Victor, page, page Oriental page Rook. Six. He's an actor. Page six. The, the whole- <laughs> so I figured this out. If we do a Bucks chiefs bet, right? And uh, then sexy pirate, and then you have to dress up <laughs> full red face Indian <laughs> if the Chiefs win, and you have to racist run around downtown. No, we. Uh, if you lose, then you have to release a photo, right? Oh no, no. But check this out: it's photoshopped, right? And and it's completely apparent to everybody. We talk about it like this is photoshopped, but you have to pick the. Breasts of a person. Hold on, this is very, very <laughs> creepy. Hold on, why is it creepy? Well, I don't know. This is you can just rewind and listen to what you said. <laughs> no, no, but, so no. You pick the uh, like uh, image on the internet that most you think matches the real life, and then do you have and somebody then, Photoshop her face on it? And then yeah, and then you and then someone like will have a professional Photoshop, and then so Photoshops her face. Oh, on, yeah, we spent a thousand dollars. No, no, I don't. Can do it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> don't say professional. No, I'm not letting Tony do it. He's terrible. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, we got well, to go independent, somebody. non-party. But yeah, shampoo, know. butler. Anyway, but then that then that photo gets to release to our listeners in some sort of facet. I don't know how to do it. Well, uh, we, I would print them here, and I'll send them yeah. uh, postage. We may have to blur the uh, the nips or something. I don't know. But anyway, so it's a fake photo, but. It, people but look it gives at it. You the yeah, idea. It's, it's, so it's yeah. like, oh my god! But you, it's like having knows a it's like, what about a drawing? What if we had? Sh- no, that's more. What about, if we that's had more of a pain in no. Draw you no. nude. Samantha doesn't want to be nude in front of. <laughs> no, Pabone. no, just from uh, memory. Because he could just, you know, I oh, mean, and just imagine her, it. Yeah, and he draws her nude, and then he just, you know. The problem is the cl- and then it draws me terribly. He yeah, could yeah. draw you nude and then it's erase a, the clothes. It's a, car- a little too cartoony, I think. Uh, the, the Photoshop version, it's it's weird because in one aspect, you don't want that out there because then after like the telephone game and years later, like people pop the image up where like this is real and then no one knows what you yeah. know. And but then, it does matter, you know, it, because I, it's I, fake. You, I can always tell fake images just based on angles. Dude, there's some Photoshop that is pretty freaking there's close. Not, not like most a, of them I can figure out. The like no. neck, the length, you know, the angle, the way the light looks. Well, Samantha would have to take a picture clothed, but in the same position as the boobs are to make it match up perfectly. That way. So what are you going to do? Yeah, well, same I don't know. thing. I, I same think, thing. No, 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 well, I, I don't think it's for me. It's not as no. It's, it's you know you need to get you need to find something for you, that you, you don't have want. To stand nude and have Pabone draw. <laughs> <laughs> That's too far. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> no, no, no. You don't look bad. You look good. Uh, yeah, but I'm not standing nude in front of Papone and the whole thing. I got to uh, have some business conversation with him <laughs> about these shirts. I forgot. It was on my list. Oh, about the shirts. Well, it's, it's a good time thing. to do it while, <laughs> while you're nude. Anyway. Um, Put them on tilt. How bad is that for you, Samantha? Is that like completely embarrassing? You don't want to do that? What are the, what um, it's weird that my boss is asking me to do that. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> what, so, well, this is uh, this yeah. is part of this uh, fantasy world. I, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. This is all, you know. Sure. I, if I learned a long time, the only thing I learned from Clear Channel. Uh, ever in my entire Just do it on the air is that if you do anything on the air, it can't be brought against you in any sort of That's lawsuit. That's not really true. <laughs> no, yeah. You I'll know have what? To talk to Mo about that. Most of uh, lawsuits were stuff Mo. that they yeah. did on the air, yeah. which yeah. Makes, me, yeah. <laughs> makes me think that I've learned this wrong yeah. <laughs> because it's actually all the lawsuits is, yeah. were the stuff on the air. Yeah. So how well, can that time, be true? Every Someone time told I me was that. deposed, it was because of on air stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I thought it was a thing, though. Remember, you were told that. We all were told. We were yeah. like, you can't do sexual harassment on But I was on only air. told that until I was deposed. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Did they change the rules? I don't know. I'm going off of stuff I learned. That's the funniest thing I've ever done. I learned this in 2003. I know. Like a different yeah. time. It's fine. We right, scratch to... all that. Yeah. Pretend uh, like it didn't happen. Let's hold. All right. Bye-bye. Welcome back to Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. Samantha and Butler are here and joining us via the power of virtual communications is our good friend, Chris Gwaltney from thehumidor.com, our partner with ABC Fine Wine and Spirits. How you doing, Chris? Good, man. How you guys doing? Good, good. Real good, man. Real good. You know, uh, it's gotten cold outside, so uh, <laughs> we have to put on our uh, Florida hoodies. Are you in Florida or are you in, uh, it, you appear to be in, in a, a forest. In a forest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually at my house on the back porch. And, nice. Uh, it is uh, actually pretty cold here. Yeah, so, it's uh, gorgeous. I mean, that is a nice look. Uh, that's awesome. Man. You got an awesome, I mean, your back porch looks out <laughs> into a forest. My God, my back porch looks off into more townhomes. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, normally yeah. just people, yeah, yeah. oh, just. Yeah, yeah. I, gotta yeah, I actually oh. lucked out on this location. So it, I'm, I am literally two minutes away from the inter- from I-95. Oh, but, yeah. uh But you get a but little. There's bit- this, yeah, there's a preserve. There's a, uh, it's part of the st john's river watershed there's a creek called durban creek and it, it flows into the st john's and it meets somewhere behind my house with another creek called julington creek and this whole area can't be developed behind us it's kind of a awesome. eco it's actually public land so um so it's pretty cool so i'm never i never have to worry about anybody being behind me but yet i'm also literally five minutes away from 95 there you so go. um and uh, 30 minutes from downtown st augustine 30 minutes from downtown Jacksonville, so I'm kind of right in the middle of everything. So it, uh, it I could be at the airport in about 45 minutes. I know so exactly where uh, – I know the area you're at. That's awesome, man, because, you know, I, I spend yeah. a lot of time in the – St. Augustine area and out towards your area. I want, Tom, I need space. I uh, think about that. Like, it'd be awesome to live where you could just walk out into the woods. But I also get lonely. Sometimes I need to see other humans just to know that the rapture hasn't happened and I wasn't left. You can see them on the internet. Uh, you, right. you know, <laughs> And naked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, to me, yeah, to me, it's the best of both worlds. So we got woods behind us if you don't want to see people. But there's a lot of houses in the neighborhood. There's a park in the front of my house right across the street. It's a soccer field. So there's always kids and stuff out there playing. Nice. Uh, actually, tonight is grown folks football night where all the guys in the neighborhood who still think they're athletic come out here and try to play football. It's you actually head out there, man. To watch. You oh. and Butler should dust yeah. off your pads and head out there. <laughs> Hold on. You have a, a, a bunch of your neighbors get together and yes. play uh, football? That sounds yes, awesome. yes, football. yes, yes, yes. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's basically, you know, when you're a kid, you all played street football, right? You said, man, if we only had a field in front of our house that we could play like a legit sports field would be awesome. Well, there's one here right across the street. It's actually a soccer field. And uh, so uh, every, every Tuesday night, I think they start about 6 o'clock, all of the wannabe children in the neighborhood, the grown men, uh, go out here and they play uh, sports. Some take it a little too seriously. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. The aggressive bro yeah. that uh, – yeah. like, Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. So You see the guy get out. He's putting on receiver gloves. You're like, okay, this guy's going to – this guy's going to no, start a fight. This you guy's going to start a fight because he's going to want to tackle somebody. You know, Chris, you bring up something. When I played – you remember when I went through – me and Andrea went through our phase of playing, like, adult co-ed soccer? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, was about yeah. 10 years ago, mm. I want to say, or eight years ago or something like that. We went through this phase where we played adult co-ed soccer, and it was really fun for about the first year. And then the more we played, we got into a higher league with the guys you're talking about that are like these weekend, like, they they take it like they're playing in the EPL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this guy's elbowing they, my wife. He's pushing her down. He they, had to take his <laughs> necklace off beforehand. He's arguing, getting in my face and screaming at me. They, they played some in high school, and then they may have played a little college, and they blew their ACL out, and then uh, you yeah. know went on. And, and they it, think they're Lionel Messi. They manage a jiffy loop, yeah. and then they go out and they they put right. the receiver gloves on, and then they and then they make their friend take a picture yeah. of them doing the punani sign. <laughs> 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 oh my God. They're like, look at this. It says Chiefs. <laughs> when I put it together. I can't read it. Your hands are too fat. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd actually like to watch a bunch of fat dads play. Yeah, really? Uh, do they bring out the... It's uh, like watching old wrestlers. <laughs> do they bring out the... Uh, the you know, Like the belts with the uh, pool? Oh, the flat? No. <laughs> no, no. There's no belts. It's usually two-hand touch. Yeah, if, it's it's, just... uh, if it's a... I usually walk the dog about the time they're starting if I'm here on Tuesday night. So if it looks like it's going to be some really big guys that shouldn't be out there, then I will I will sit on the front porch, smoke a few cigars with a glass of scotch, and watch. Uh, you can literally hear the tendons creaking and the oh. bones <laughs> aching from from across the street. It's that absolutely uh, very entertaining for me. You know, we so. used to have over over here on on calm nights. There's a I think it's I think they tore it down. But there used to be a, a really nice um, public softball or baseball facility with, like, the Kiwanis Club of that area had uh, raised money for lights, like professional-grade baseball lights. So they had this, the whole stadium set up, and you could go, and I guess you could rent it. So they'd have this league where dads would go and play. And on clear nights, you would hear them arguing all the way to my town home. Uh -huh. like, and it's miles, but you could hear them. And, and undoubtedly, every single, I want to say it was a Thursday, they would argue. Like, they'd never not argue. There would always be a fight. Yeah. Also, <clears throat> I feel like uh, football uh, and soccer especially. Like, uh, Well, you need so much stamina. Like, uh, that's why... Uh, oh, I thought you were going to say... The, I saw more fights with those than I ever did with baseball. Oh, no, yeah, because more... Yeah, well, the, the fat dads, you, you need to stick with the adult softball league because there's a lot of standing and, uh, you know, yeah, and then... It's a fellowship. And then, uh, you know, every once in a while, you may have to run some bases. But, like, <laughs> other than that, the standing and you could do it... You, you need to stick with... Uh, sports you could do drunk <laughs> like that's all yeah Bowling, <laughs> hard, hard, golf hard to run uh, you know, a dozen routes uh buzz yeah, like you can't do the, it that's the problem is like you got like eight guys it's almost like or say it's like seven on seven and you got like six or seven overweight dudes all running go routes play after play after play after play <laughs> after play yeah. and then there's the one really really tired guy who just goes out about five yards and does a curl you know and then after a he's while a designated he's a he's a designated check down route because he can't run more than five oh yards. yeah well who's <laughs> even gonna cover that after a while right yeah. like, i'm not, I'm not yeah. running after you <laughs> <laughs> but yeah man it's it's uh it's, it's quite entertaining i'm with you though man softball is definitely you know the one sport outside of things like bowling and billiards obviously your dad didn't you can play. Drink and play your dad so didn't. i mean yeah you don't want to be playing you don't you don't want to be playing sports like soccer and uh, football where you just gotta do all that running back and forth. And uh, beautiful thing about softball is yeah, there's a lot of standing around. My dad played in a softball deep. league, and and it was the church softball league. And he, I guess they played other churches, and they had like a uniform. And I remember going and sitting in the bleachers and watching them play. It was kind of cool. And I think my daughter's gonna miss out on that. Like that wasn't a, it's not a thing now. Yeah. Oh no. I'm mean, there's still a lot of people that play. Chris, you ever got into any adult uh, sports activities? Uh, you don't strike me as the guy that uh, gets into any of that stuff. I, I played some softball. You know. Um, you know. You you get you get in your thirties, man. That's your that's your beer league prime, right? Yeah. You know. You can you can drink a twelve pack and, and still hit the ball over the fence. But uh, I did that for a little while, but. A lot of the people that I was playing with, most of the people I work with, we had a couple of injuries and people didn't want to play anymore. And and uh, the league got so convoluted and it was, we, you know, you if you swore, if you said a curse word, we'd get to where we'd get so many people thrown out of the game that we wouldn't have enough to finish a game. So, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was very difficult to, uh, to do it. But I did it for a while. It was fun. You know, I, I do have that. You, you do have that competitive. 
you know, itch that you need to scratch uh, every so often. So, it but is for a me, I'm just, I'm just fine going out and throwing a ball around. It's funny you, know, you said that. That's it, the extent of my athletic. It definitely right is a 30s thing because, like, yeah. I, I did it beginning of my 30s. And then, as you, you know, obviously I have a kid now, so I, I'm not, you know, going to take mm. away a night to go and, you know, drink beer with the guys for a sport I don't even care about. Mm. Yeah, oh. I mean, that'd be kind of silly. So, you know what I miss, Chris? I miss the celebrity charity. Rock and Jock. Softball. Yeah, the Rock and Jock. <laughs> yeah. Because they're those, like, because I. Dan Cortez and Roger Clemens. And I feel present like. Rock and Jock. Like, we're in the perfect time for it. Uh, obviously, now, they, this, uh, it seems like all the leagues have just figured out a way to deal with the COVID and keep keep going. Yeah. But um, I just, you know, and maybe, maybe now isn't the perfect time because you're doing something that's unnecessary. Uh, and then, but I just enjoyed back in the nineties or whatever they did the rock and like seeing right, right. a mixture yeah. of not only like professional athletes, but maybe retired professional yeah. athletes and, um, like, uh, hip hop artists. Yeah. Uh, I like watching like smaller, uh, musicians actors. like flea or Justin <laughs> Bieber, or great ball player. I'm like, yeah, yeah, pretty good. And then you put them all together. You find, because w- within all these celebrity, uh, everywhere, there's people that are into like like playing basketball or baseball or whatever it is like, and they're pretty yeah. decent at it. You know, they play some dad games and like, and I want to watch these people play sports just because it's entertaining. And they we don't do that anymore. And uh, I don't, I'm not sure why because it seems easy enough to get some of these people together. Like I understand hard to probably get Patrick Mahomes involved, but you can yeah. get you know uh, retired guys, retired athletes. I mean. Know. I, you get a you get a three hundred and fifty pound David Wells p- pitching to uh, Dave Matthews in a <laughs> yeah that, that's ball. awesome right. Right. I, the, right. like that's entertaining it was the banter that I really liked because they they would get big when they would do the baseball one and and I'll use Rock and Jock as my example just because it's one I know the best. But they would get big name baseball players, but then they would get like big name rock stars and comedians that were personalities that had like more than just their playing ability. They were characters. Yeah, yeah. And it was the banter and the jokes and the fact that they didn't take it so seriously. Like they would have costumes and they'd dress up and they'd act silly. So it was kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. of course. And then uh, and then everybody you knew their names, and then like sometimes you do, you're like, oh, that person knows how to play, you know, and you're like, yeah. oh, they're better than I thought. It just uh, it seems like we could make this happen. Not us, but like uh, the, the industry can put together something. And then also, here's the thing: if you uh, if you paid these guys a little something for their time, and then maybe scaled it down, of, yeah. like not so high, and then promise the X amount to charity. It's good for all these people's uh, careers because they get exposure. Like, I feel like it, it's not that impossible. You know, Chris, one of the things I, I, you know, during COVID, obviously networks are scrambling to try and find as much, you know, easy stuff to film that they can put on there without having to go to the can and pull out stuff they don't yeah. like or whatever. But I always thought it would be cool, kind of going along with your idea, how many celebrities do we know of, even local guys, I know we know of guys, that have bowling alleys in their homes. I'm surprised there has never been a show where there's like some sort of crazy celebrity bowling. It takes little to no yeah, time. Right. It's easy. You test it's, everybody before they do it. Yeah. As, you know, it's, it's I mean, gonna, but you, you follow me. You could do it virtually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, that would be awesome. You don't even need, they could do it at their home alley, is what I mean. Like oh, they, oh, so like everybody, you, yeah, yeah. You like, could do it anywhere. Plus, it's, it's almost like Cribs meets bowling because it's like Eddie Murphy versus Kevin Hart in you. their home bowling alley. Now hours. you got it. Although, I bet you there's like that may be. They do it for money, too. Do you think the home bowling alley is as popular or do you think that that's. Oh, you think that's old school? That's an old school it thing. Is. I'm showing my age. Because. Celebrity bowling was a show in the 70s. Bring it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd watch the hell out of it. Yeah. But but you got to put it on. You got to make it fun. You put it on like an HBO Max. You put it on like something where it can be slightly uncensored. You that way, Lil Wayne can say the f word if he wants to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, like and you yeah. and you put characters. You load it with characters. You you find the craziest guys to do it, and it's bowling. It's it's harmless. Yeah, and uh, and they're like you laugh at the. Some of them won't be good. Who cares? You know, put a stakes at the end, yeah. like some sort of big bet. Uh, make teams. Hey, yeah, you're right. 
I watch that. I mean, there's worse shows Better than out. Ellen's Games of Games. That is garbage. <laughs> yeah. It is the worst show on television. So, Chris, I know we always talk a little sports, and the biggest sporting event in the United this States is, the is coming out. This is the only cigar segment where we guarantee <laughs> zero <laughs> cigars. Well, real, Absolutely. Well, we can uh, touch on the humidor. Any, anything coming up? Uh, Obviously, um, you know, speaking of the Super Bowl, we're going to talk about, like, people like to smoke cigars uh, during up. during uh, sports, right? Yeah, we've got, uh, well, I have to say, we have we can't, we have to use the term the big game because, uh, but if, oh, you, oh, if you go to our website, oh, yes. uh, yeah, we've got some uh, big game samplers, you know, everything for, for that football event that's going to be on Sunday. I'm not trying to pay any licensing to the no, NFL. I got but, uh, no, I But, yeah. Chris, we Tom did. Tom doesn't believe in that <laughs> I, know, you know, I, won't st- I won't start screaming here because yeah. I, you're a, I, a I, value I feel, like we, I feel like we have a vaxxer on the line, and, and then I'm currently sitting with a non-vaxxer, and it's uh, about to get real. But, it's like the, that fight in I, front of your house at the soccer field, Chris. I, I, they ha- Don't I, do this to me, back Tom. Back in my old radio days, everybody was so sensitive about it, uh, and I, I feel like nowadays it's too – there's too much stuff until and then, Chris gets the letter. Yeah, I know. It's impossible to enforce. <laughs> and I, I, I spent the other day, Chris, I yelled it uh, 500 times on the air and I was like, come get me. You'll never no one. This won't get back to anybody. But that's you, not Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I can say, hey, we could call it Super Bowl, but I'm just saying as far as like the, the official verbiage on the website yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, all yeah. that, all the social media advertising is called big game. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah for sure. Of course. Well, they do. For sure. I, a computer program you know, they, just runs well, the they, bots they, to find those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here in Jacksonville, they have tried to stop calling the Georgia-Florida game the world's largest outdoor cocktail party, and it literally only happens on the official television broadcast. Everybody re- still refers to it as the world's largest outdoor cocktail party, yep. and we'll continue to do that no matter what the university presidents uh, ask people to say. But but I'm with you. I- I'm pretty excited about the game, and I think it's going to be yeah, I do too. a really good Super Bowl. I think it's going to be one of the better ones we've had in the last decade. Um you know, just because of of Brady, I've, I've uh, I think the weather could be a factor. If it if it rains, I think that could really change things. That would Ooh. neutralize Kansas City's speed. And then for all you guys who want to put a couple of bucks down on MVP, if it rains, man, a sleeper pick might be Leonard Fournette as your Super Bowl MVP Ooh. if they have to turn around and hand that ball off thirty or forty times. Uh-huh. If it's if it's a, if it's sloppy, but you know. Uh, there's also the saying that if you think about it, a lot of people just assume that the conditions are really bad, that you're just going to run it and you're going to revert back to the way they played football 40 years ago. But you talk to most modern, you look at most modern offenses, even though it will slow down some of the speed aspects, to me, I would rather pass the ball in the rain just because the receiver knows where he's going and the defender has to react. So you're always going to have that advantage uh, of, uh, of you know, if it's a slippery surface, it's always going to be advantage on the receiver, not the defender, because the defender has to react. But it makes sense. But I don't know, man. I'm pretty excited. What's the over? The over is it like 54 still? 56 and a half. It's high. Wow. And 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 I'm glad you brought this up. I'm we're going to be talking to Mike from Mike's weather page later on in this show. Um, uh, obviously we'll record it tomorrow, but I've been talking to him back. And I forth wasn't scared because I, uh, I saw that that front is coming in and I'm like, Hey, is it going to rain? Because we, that, it's funny that, you, that we th- just talked about Cause it. I just checked my, my book right now and it's still 56 and a half, um, minus one Oh five and plus one Oh five. So it's not even ticking any which way. And now I've, I've uh, listened to a lot of professional gamblers talk about, uh, rain and how it affects scores. And technically, wind only affects scores. Rain doesn't, uh, right. throughout the history, affect scores that much. But my theory is, with such a high total, that if there is rain and even a little bit of wind, it's got to affect it, let's say, a couple points. And therefore, there's value on the under. Like, And plus, the way that uh, the people, like... Coaches stereotypically play a little bit more conservative mm-hmm. on the Super Bowl, at least in the start. And we've seen this time and time again. We saw it last Super Bowl and the Super Bowl before that, where the first quarter is usually both teams feeling each other out because the saying goes, you you can't win a, uh, a game in the first quarter, but you could lose it. I mean, look what happened with the Steelers. Like uh, you, you, you make you know well, a bunch of mistakes, and it goes bad, bad. It, it, it the game gets away from you, out of control. And yeah. then once you're they playing, lost it there. yeah, you're playing from behind, and it's a completely different thing. So I think a lot of teams are really like like they play conservative first 
quarter at least because they they don't want to make a mistake and I and so that lends it to the under the Bucks defense lends it to the under the fact that the Chiefs O line is screwed 56 up 56 and a half 56 and a half. It's a high total, dude. I and 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 yeah, no it's pretty high. And, and I understand that it like uh, we all live in Florida, so we understand when a cold front comes in, it's not violent thunderstorms. No, like, no. It's it's basically that gray, windy, misty rain, which is not that if bad. If I'm really being honest, it's it's actually quite nice. Yeah, it's it's not bad, and we're not saying that it's gonna affect play that much, but all it needs to do is Just a little bit. You you run two percent more than you normally would or uh, a receiver drops a, a sure. couple wet balls and then that, and then your total is under i i just feel like betting the under 56 and a half what say you it? about under wet balls yeah, like that, that seems <laughs> yeah, pretty good. I'm, I'm i'm with you and i'll tell you something else that's, that's probably making it a little bit harder you brought up some good points about the super bowl coaches overcoach sometimes in the super bowl but one thing we've seen the last couple of years especially this year in the playoffs is coaches beginning to be a little bit more unorthodox in their approach to uh, analytics. And uh, in the old days where you just take the points, you see guys going for it. You see people, yeah. you know, we saw it, we saw it the, uh, in the uh, AFC and NFC championship weekends. You had coaches kicking field goals when they should have been going for touchdowns. Correct. You had guys going for two when they should have kicked a PAT and guys kicking PATs when they should have gone for two. It's like, it's, that's kind of turned upside down a little bit. So I know that's got to make, it makes it a little bit more difficult um, because you don't traditionally, you know, betting and, and trying to figure things out. You're looking at, at norms and how things have been done over the years. And for so long football, we've always known the, the coaches almost always go by the book when it comes to when to go for two, when to kick a PAT, when to do all these different things, when to chase points, when not to chase points. And that's less predictable these days because more and more teams have incorporated more modern analytics into the game and they're, they're doing things that you wouldn't have ever seen a coach do a couple of years ago, not even, you know, forget 10 years ago, five years ago, they're, they're doing stuff a lot differently now. So that, I know that also makes it harder, but I'm with you, man, even though you got some high powered offenses, I'd probably lean towards the under on this. Um, even, even if the weather's not a major factor, just because I think the teams are going to play so cautious, especially if it's, if it's very low scoring game early on, then, then you're going to have the teams are going to be like, man, we got to make every possession count. The yeah. coaches are going to like, they just, I think, I think they overcoach. But you do have, you do have one coach in this game, uh, and that's the coach for uh, Kansas City, Andy Reid, who is can be unorthodox at times, and he 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 will coach to win. I, I think you could see him doing some moves like Sean Payton did in the Super Bowl to beat the Colts when they were when they were underdogs. And I mean, the onside kick coming out in the second half. I think Andy Reid's got a lot of that into him, man. He he doesn't care. He'll 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 take some he'll take some chances. And people, um, so, know, he's like the coach's coach, right? Like Andy Reid is the coach that he right. gets the nod, right? In this, yes. if you're, if you're, <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> Bruce, yeah. good coach, but yeah, not no. an Andy Reid coach. Yeah, Andy Reid is, is considered. I don't know. He's an elite coach, just from what I've heard. That uh, yes, right. he would yeah. be considered but, elite. Yeah, but you know, I, you know, I will give Tampa Bay credit and Bruce Arians and uh, and the offensive coaching staff credit, um, just because of the game plan they had against the Packers. They did some unorthodox things too, you know, like most teams would have, the book would tell you to get in range, kick the field goal. And they basically took an all or nothing shot for the touchdown right before the half. And that, that, that really was the backbreaker for the Packers going into halftime, that, yeah. that last touchdown. So I thought, you know, Byron, I don't know if this is Arians or this is Byron Leftwich, the offensive coordinator for the Bucks, who's, who's really like pushing this kind of push, pushing that, uh, that change or whatever. But, uh, but I tell you, you know, you got, uh, you've got two coaches here that proven they'll do some yes. do some things that are a now, little out of whack. Mm -hmm. So that does scare you. That does scare you. And, but uh, you know, I don't know. You'll, you'll see. I, I would kind of lean towards the under. And then, of course, you know what will happen is somebody jumps out big and then yeah, yeah, they start chasing the points and then Chris, it blows everything out of the water. Chris, I'm, just, I, I'm, I'm imagining this, that we're talking all this bad BS about, like, under some weather, there's going to be a little bit of rain. Yeah. And then we're trying to – it's like first quarter trades, and then of course, like 38 points. Like, yeah, Tampa's yeah. been scoring, like, a plus 30 in all their playoff games. And it's like, of course, like – and they're like, yeah, Bruce Aaron's like, hey, if we're going to beat uh, the Chiefs, we have to literally no punting, light just go up. for it, light <laughs> it up. And then, of course, uh, the Chiefs – 
don't punt Jesus. anyway. So they're scored. And then, and then I'm sitting back as I'm watching. It's going to be and like. And it's just both sides. Catching, 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 catching. It, 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 it's our, and the first half, they put up 45. <laughs> and then I'm like, nah. And that's the worst, too. When you bet the under and you know at the first half. Because the first half. It's they a put, bloated first half. They put up 38 points. And then you're sitting there. And then you got to excruciate. And you don't even want to watch the game now. You know you're going to lose. But you think to yourself, maybe uh, some, maybe Mahomes gets hurt. And then, like, they stop scoring. And, you're just, and then it just. Well, I've seen you do it before where. You oh, blo- the, it's a bloated first half, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so then you don't want to watch it, and then you're just lingering in the second half to only be beat by, like, a point. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it gets to a point where it's just like you lose out because of literally nothing. And, it just... and then I'm live betting, trying to bet, win my money back, Chasing and then I'm, I'm so drunk, I can't do the math in my head. Because like, how, what are they, <laughs> what are, how many points they have to score for me to, anyway, uh, so... Chris, tell us about some uh, humidor specials, and uh, of course, we're telling everybody to use our promo code Tom and Dan when they order save through the money. humidor.com, and you'll save some money on every purchase. Plus, it'll help us out. Um, so, anything new on the site right now? Yeah, we got a lot of new new samplers out there. We got one especially for the Super Bowl. We also got the cigar of the year that was announced a couple of weeks ago. We had that cigar in. That's the um, Another cigar from Ernesto Perez Carrillo is a cigar aficionado cigar of the year. Wow. We have those in on the website. You can buy them. I think we put a limit on those cigars. They're kind of uh, hard. There's not a lot of them floating around out there. So, uh, but yeah, uh, I think you can buy two or three sticks. I can't, I can't remember what we set nice. the limit at. Can't, can't buy any full boxes, but uh, we do have plenty right now. So if you want to try the cigar of the year, I know, I know there's not a lot of retailers that, that, that have them, but we do have them at the So, uh, cool. Hop on out there and give it a shot. It's a good smoke. So it's the second time in three years that he's he's won Cigar of the Year. So wow. um, good doing, stuff coming yeah, from the DR. Obviously doing good things there if he's winning yep. that much. Um, last question, because I don't think we've ever asked you this. A box of cigars, is it like donuts they come in a dozen or like a cigarettes they come in like a 20 in, in a pack or whatever? Like a box of cigars, is it a standard amount all the time? <laughs> No, it just depends. It depends on the manufacturer and what they want to do. Um, you know, sometimes they're twenty-five count, twenty-six count, twenty-four, ten. A, a lot, a uh-huh. lot, a lot of manufacturers, especially on some higher price cigars. If you've got a fifteen or twenty dollars cigar, then uh, a lot of them will like to put it in a ten, a ten count box because it's a little bit more affordable for people to buy the full box. Um, but it, it's there's really no rhyme or reason. Okay. Um, you know, twenty count. Uh, 20 counts, probably the, you're going to find the most boxes at, at 20. It's probably what I know if I, if I go through our line, uh, you're going to see 20 counts is pretty much the, the one that's going to be the most, but there's a lot of 10 count boxes and a lot of 25 counts too. So. Okay. I would uh, like to do a one stick box. <laughs> Lucy. One Very stick. rare. Is it a little, like a wand, like a Harry Potter wand. Mm. You lift up, the, there's one stick. Hey, in they there. make them. They're, they, uh, they call them coffins. So you can buy, you can buy them. They come in a little individual I like that. wooden coffin box that pops up and just like you've got your little Harry Potter. That's what I want to be buried in, a cigar coffin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to lose enough weight to be buried in a cigar coffin. Morbidly obese is a piano yeah. box yeah. than yeah. you're a cigar coffin. Yeah, there you go. Uh, well, Chris, nice. thanks for uh, jumping on a phone call today with us. And, uh, again, thehumidor.com. Use promo code Tom and Dan. And uh, we'll talk to you uh, after the Super Bowl next week. But uh, I'll uh, I'll shoot you a text. If, if, if Mike tells me it's going to be like, <clears throat> really rainy. We're hitting the under. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Mike's a good dude, man. We sponsor his uh, his Facebook yeah. page. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, we keep him. Hey, you got a guy out there. He's the best. I'm gonna tell you right now. When it comes to hurricane season, turn off the Weather Channel. Just go to Facebook because he has more accurate information than. He than does. anybody out there, man. He's on it, so we got to make sure we keep him with plenty and he's of, super, of booze. If he's you're gonna super be nice cooking. guy too, just yeah. like a hell of a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hundred thousand people up. watching him live. What he do? Like, oh my god! What? <laughs> like, oh it's my insane, god. man. But yeah. you know, he's accurate. I mean, he he's the only person that puts all that information, all the different models out there, and lets people see all that and kind of break it down. Whereas if you go to different weather channels they they have their own kind of proprietary they systems just get that they their use, notes so and I like read it, it. Yeah. yeah 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 no yeah he's great yeah. um so anyway chris uh we appreciate it and we'll talk to you soon okay all right cool see you man all right be good ya. that is chris Gwaltney from the humidor.com our mm-hmm. good friend from abc fine wine and spirits oh do we gonna go it's uh, uh, uh oh, oh.
bye bye.